everyone. Welcome Bless to the Receipt Podcast. Thank you. <laughs> this week, presented to you by MeUndies. You've heard me talk about MeUndies, and you know I'm a big believer in their product. They're the perfect balance of comfortable fit. Every month, they have new and exciting prints, and they arrive at your door in a fun bag. Uh, right now, I'm wearing the taco and hot sauce one, which I believe is a limited edition print for this month. Maybe. Show it. Uh, MeUndies <laughs> uses, wow, I didn't see this word. MeUndies uses lensing micromodal in their underwear. It's sustainably sourced natural soft fiber that starts with beechwood trees and ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. 100% satisfaction guarantee. MeUndies guarantees you'll love their undies or your money back. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear. They offer 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you'll get a full refund. It's a no-brainer. 20% off the most comfortable undies you'll ever put on. To get 20% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. That's MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. Thank you to MeUndies for presenting this episode of Reese's Podcast. This podcast is also brought to you by Audible. And I'm Gus. I'm MeUndies. I'm Becca. I'm also MeUndies. And I'm MeUndies too, except I'm a little hot sauce and taco. I'm not, I'm not MeUndies. No, you're Sorry, not. Guys. We're all MeUndies. No. Do they make pregnancy MeUndies? <gasps> Do they? I don't, I don't think I've seen they'd that. They'd be though. us undies. I mean, pre- 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 <laughs> pre- <laughs> pregnancy <laughs> underwear. We, we undies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? We undies. We undies. Is we good. undies. That yeah. would be better. That's a yeah. dual purpose, too, because yes, you're going to pee on that's, 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 that's how collaboration works, back and forth. I yeah. assume they'd have to be reinforced for the baby drippage. <laughs> Go ahead. Is someone talking about baby drippage? I don't know, do babies leak like, while they're in the oven? That would be bad. Leak. That would no, be really bad. A leaking bad. baby would probably be a problem. Yeah. You want right. to get that like plugged up. We've learned a lot so early in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> have, have we have we ever had a pregnant woman on the podcast before? <laughs> Me? Were, yeah, were you pregnant been, yeah. on the mm-hmm. podcast? Last time. Oh, okay. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, like right. this pregnancy. Right, right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> what am I thinking? Was, and we might, yeah, and Lindsay was, no, shoot, that was right after. When I did The Amazing Race, uh, we went through uh, Columbia as part of it. And so I, w- I had Zika on my radar. Way before anybody else that I knew because it was a problem there and we got bit by a couple of mosquitoes while we were in South America And so then started to learn about the Zika thing and I remember I actually contacted some of the people who were in the amazing race I said hey look You can sometimes you don't know when you're pregnant or not and nobody mm-hmm. was pregnant while doing the amazing race But you might have been so if, if anybody's pregnant now just be aware of this thing. Did you take a test? No, no, no Man. I mean I think I would have shown symptoms for Zika by now. What is the symptom of Zika? I oh, meant a, 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 a pregnancy like, test. Yeah. yeah. The most recent season of the oh, Amazing Race. Did I take a test? No, yeah, I wasn't pregnant. <laughs> the most recent season of the Amazing Race just wrapped up. Was it last week? Season 30? Such a good season. Oh, yeah, but the fuck. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the winter sucks. Oh. I mean, not sucks, but they were not who I was rooting for. Yeah. I was, because they suck. <laughs> I, was, I was not rooting for them either. Yeah. I was, I was rooting for, for other another team. I don't know. I mean, it's possible. Does anybody, could you possibly spoil the 30th season of Amazing Race. Like, if someone waiting to watch it all, do you think? It's, been out, it's it? been out for a week now. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible somebody's waiting to binge watch it all. But it's out. You're either a fan of that show or, you know, yeah. you're not. It's like we're not picking up a whole lot of new viewers for Red versus Blue at this point. It's like, you, you know, no one's going to start at episode one of season one. I found just it, binge watch through I found it hard years. to watch that show. Red, Red versus, versus Blue? Blue? Thanks, dude. No, no, Amazing Race. <laughs> Not in terms of the content. I, I just didn't know how to get it. Like, I don't have TV service, and it seemed like watching it on demand was a real bitch. You well, it's CBS. Up. CBS yeah. is kind of a pain. It's a pain yeah. in the ass. Well, they have that all access now, right? I'm sure it's on there, but you have yeah. to... Yeah, you have to use your like, cable you provider info and all that, right? You yeah. watching that Discovery? Discovery? I, I watched the <laughs> first watch Discovery? two episodes. Yeah? Star Trek show? Yeah, then I stopped. It's only on digital, only on CBS oh, yeah. all access? Yeah. I haven't watched a bit of it. <laughs> the first two episodes were fine. I think CBS, I think I bought CBS All Access when I was on The Amazing Race so we could watch the episodes digitally. And I think I just kind of kept it this whole mm. time. It was one of those things that's like... Is it free? Yeah, I'm like, no, every three it. months they're hitting me for the mm. Old Republic MMO too. As well, I mean, as well, not the Old Republic too. But uh, every now and then that's like, I gotta go through my credit cards and like just strip out all of my subscriptions I do that, stuff. yeah. Yeah, I did that. That's when I realized I'd been paying like 10 bucks a month for a game attack I hadn't signed into in three years. That's how they oh, get you. Yeah. That's how they get you. They get you in that subscription. But yeah, I, in. I signed up for the free trial of All Access when Discovery came out, so I watched the first two episodes. And I was like, okay, you know, is this something I'm gonna, I wanna pay for? And I looked through like the catalog of shows available. And I was like, there's nothing here. For me, there's nothing here I want to watch. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not going to pay just for Star Trek. That so maybe I'll go back and I'll pay for like a month to watch it all and then just be done with it. Have we aged out yes. of the piracy window, or do you think piracy has just gone way down? 
Like I, I always heard, I, I think stuff's more accessible now. Yeah, yes. it's easier. It's as easy as it is to pirate. I think pirating is so much harder now that and riskier. The, true. Russian hackers. That the, it's just that, like the default is just like ah, eh, ninety nine cents, whatever. Right, and it's and it's already on your phone, or it's already like tied into. Your I think thing. they they made it more convenient to buy it, but it used to be more convenient to just download it right because mm-hmm. you couldn't find it or it wasn't available or whatever. Yeah. Like, and I've never, I've never pirated a movie because I was in that industry and it felt wrong. I am. Um, see, I had friends that were in the movie industry <clears> and they were just adamantly against piracy of movies. But if it was a TV show, they were just like, "Well, it's TV, it's free, it's a, you know whatever." It's uh, like, That's not see, how the fucking work model on, works. I'd work on both. Yeah, I had a very tense conversation with a friend of mine. And Did you yell? He professional. I was just like, "Dude, you're being a fucking hypocrite," you know? Because like yeah, when, I get it. It's free. And like, we'll already pay for cable service. It's like, well, well, the movies are going to be on your cable service eventually anyway, so just fucking pirate the movies. Wait, wait a few years. Right? Yeah. Like when someone who works here uses Adblock. Like, yeah. List them. Who doesn't name names. Use... Go. Name them. We, we, we will take them out. We'll block them. I don't want to say. I use Adblock. <laughs> what? Use Adblock what? at work? Yes. For what? Do you Everything? know where you work? I just, it's, it's like always been on my Chrome. So, I mean, I it's just, just there. That, uh, but, 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 yeah. But, I, I do pause it. On occasion. <laughs> what in the world? Oh my god. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that was such a faux pas. I don't know if you're coming back on the podcast oh, anymore. Yeah. Shit. I don't know if we can afford you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna install Becca Block on this episode. <laughs> and every time it comes to Becca, it's just gonna be like a blank That'd white square. That'd be a square. great Chrome extension that we could make. Yeah. See, this is what I'm okay with. I'm okay with there being two models of... Because I think at certain points in your life, you have more time than you have money. And there's other parts of your life where you have more money than you have time. Like if you're 90? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, not, not like time left. I mean, just oh. time in your <laughs> oh, like busy, busy schedule. <laughs> so it's like one of those things, like on video games, when you can buy something, like you buy cosmetics or whatever, either you can play like 30 or 40 hours and win the thing, or you can pay two bucks and get it right now. And for for me, be like, oh, microtransactions are terrible. It's like, no, requiring me to play something for 40 hours is just astronomically out of question. And expensive. It's expensive to play something for 40 hours. It's expensive in time? Yeah. Not being productive? Yeah. yeah. But also, you don't, you don't have to be playing the game. What do I have to do? You don't have to be, doing, you don't have to be touching the game. Oh. You're choosing to play it. And then you're buying the, your way to the end. I'm not buying my way to the end. It's a cosmetic thing. Oh, just because. Although, my kids say the same thing. They are, like, staunchly anti-microtransaction. They will not buy anything. No, I, I bought either. I bought a skin on Fortnite, and they're, they're <laughs> done with me. They're fucking they done They look down with at me. you. Oh my gosh, it was such disdain. I've done it at work a lot because we have to buy vehicles for GTA, but yeah. I wouldn't ever do that for playing that game on my own. The one like, I always associate with is Tiger Woods Golf had a thing where when you wanted to play multiplayer, you could level your character up through something like 150 hours of gameplay, or you could pay 10 bucks and just get the player leveled all the way up. Might, might not have been multiplayer, it said multiplayer, but it might not have been, it was single player. Is this something you did? No, I don't play Tigers Wood Golf, but I remember that being one of the early controversies. <laughs> yeah, it was that was a long time ago. Like, oh, you can just you can just level the player up, you're just paying to like what everyone is playing the game for. It's like, no, some people are just playing the game to play a golf game. They're right. not going through the leveling thing or That's unlocking bad. stuff. Like another thing too is unlocking like tracks in a race game. It's just like it takes so long. Yeah, like you have to play the game to unlock the game. Right. Like, the game I bought, I've gotta like work for the game now. I gotta right. go I gotta go to work on this thing. And I just, I'd rather just like say, I would, five bucks. The only time I would pay to avoid something in a game is where you have to pay, you have to play a game to a certain point to get to the multiplayer. I hate that. If going straight to multiplayer was like a buck, I would do it. Well, I would think that I've always been one of the people who plays single player first and then plays multiplayer. It's just annoying for making videos. I, no, I get that. Yeah. There's that thing on GTA when you play multiplayer for the first time, you gotta go through this like. Yeah. Graveyard. And there are so order. many there are so many videos and sometimes the sponsored videos where it's like, oh, I'll just do this half an hour let's play. And it's like, oh fine. But you'd have to play it for two hours to get to the point where you could do the let's play. Oh, it's like right. such a waste of everyone's time. Damn. And then and then you feel like a an asshole for like having other people play on your account to get you up to the point where you can play. Oop. Sorry, guys. You lost your power. Disc, disc. Uh, uh, do you remember the big project that we had for Halo 3? Where the I forget what it was, but the Mark, was it Mark Six helmet? Yeah, Mark Six was the oh one we God. used. Yeah. That to unlock that in Halo Three, you had to go through 
Was it the Mark Six? That was a Mark Five for Caboose that you. It was did Mark Five for Caboose, but there was a reason why we had to do it on like six profiles. And wasn't it like beat the whole game on Legendary? Yeah, or and we oh, had God. so we said to the community, "Hey, we're going to hand out these gamer tags, <laughs> please." And if you guys it. just want to level these things up, we'll give you, we'll send you something for it. Because you and I were not going to play through twelve. No, twelve different ones. I had a really but, weird thing this weekend where I was trying to remember the names of all the recollection titles: six, seven, and eight. And for some reason, I blanked. I blanked on eight. That's hard. Reconstruction. Yeah. Yep. Recreation. Yep. What's eight? Resurrection? No. <laughs> I don't remember what it was eight. Isn't that crazy? Oh, well, that was that was the one where it was all animated. That's, yeah, you just named the show. Good for you. Yeah, that's right. There were like shoot 'em up characters in it. Yeah. <laughs> what was the name of it, Gavin? Classic Gavin. He doesn't know something, so he changes the subject. No, I'm just else. trying to remember what happened in that season. That was one where Monty was doing animation in it. That's the big fight with Meta on the yeah. ice flows and all that stuff. Is that Revelation? Nailed it. Revelation. That's the man over there that See, knows. I thought that, and I thought, well, that's the- I'm thinking of Assassin's Creed, because that yeah. third one of that was also the so, Revelation. Yeah, we probably it, stole that from us. It was Halo Reach, <laughs> where you had to unlock the Mark VI helmet, uh, and it cost 300,000 credits, and you, have, you can only unlock it at Brigadier, which itself required 1.4 million credits. Maybe that's what it was. Blech. Right. Maybe that's what Too it was. Too much time. That's a lot of time. That's according to Stack Exchange, quoting uh, Halo Wiki. For that, for that data. Halo Reach fans, people who that's their favorite Halo game, they are hardcore Reach fans. Like, they are very upset. I really liked Reach. That was a great game. I liked Sword Base. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a really fun one to play. You got, I like, like jetpacks and shit. I like that it was a part of a campaign map. Just like a shrunken down bit. Where they just blocked off some of the doors. But you go through there in the campaign. Yeah. You don't like that? No, I do. I just wish you that, that, that was the Bernie. Eh, I don't like this. No, nah, it's just like, yeah, I just wish you'd gone through Blood Gulch during the Halo campaign. That'd have been pretty funny. Yep. Wouldn't have made any sense at all. <laughs> Would have been funny. Oh, uh, man. I didn't tell you. I had the, the dumbest fishing attempt on me while I was overseas <laughs> a couple weeks ago. <laughs> no, no. Someone, someone called me trying to get like my bank account information or something. So I got, I had a missed call and I looked, I listened to the voicemail. It's like, hello, this is Robert with. Fraud with fraud prevention department. Uh, we noticed some unusual activity on your account. Uh, if you give us a call back at this number, I press option three. I was like, okay. So I call them. They, they didn't name of any bank. They didn't name what kind of account. And I was like, all right, I'll call them back. We'll see what this is about. So I call. I go through the phone tree, and they're like, oh yeah, you know, this is fraud fraud prevention department. Said I got missed a call from you guys. You said there might be fraud on my account. I only called because I was overseas. I thought I just want to be safe. And normally I get a text message from. Right. So I didn't get a text message. I knew this was full of shit from the beginning. So I called him back, <laughs> and I'm uh, talking to the guy. He's like, yeah, yeah, uh, can you uh, let me know what your account number is? <laughs> and I go, you need my account number? He goes, yeah, um, in order for me to look it up. The call just gets routed to me. I don't know. It's like, you can't tell what my account is based on the, f the phone number I called you from? He goes, no, 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 you got to tell us your account number. It's like, okay. So I, was like, I read off like a, what sounded like a credit card number, but it wasn't my credit card number. He's like, okay, okay, I've got your account here. Uh, in order to verify your identity, I need to send you a pin to your phone via text message. Can you tell me what your cell phone number is? And I said, you want me to tell you my cell phone number so you can send it a text and then verify my identity? <laughs> and he goes, yes. And I go, I could read you any phone number in the world and you would send it a text message and you would verify that it's me. He goes, yes, that's the procedure here. I go, you don't realize how this is stupid? He goes, so wait, he was going to send you a code, right? But if yeah. you gave, okay, I see. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like it makes like you're like what? That's what I was, and I said, yeah, I'm. Uh, I said I don't believe you. I said uh, I'm going to call the number that's printed on the back of my credit so card that... and ask them. And I called the number on my credit card, and they're like, no, we didn't call you. And they're, they're like, can you tell us what the the voicemail said? And I read them what the voicemail said, and they go, no, no. You see, there's three key things we always leave in every voicemail. It's like this, this, and this. That voicemail didn't list anything. Like. That's nothing. That's Not even the name of the bank. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that, that's obviously a phishing attempt. So you is that a way to try and get around two-step verification by using your phone? I think they try to make you think that they're doing it, yeah, right. but it's like <laughs> you're giving them the number. Or they just want your credit card number and the phone number. Like that's often used to verify the credit card number. Mm -hmm. so. Or they said that also uh, I could verify myself. They could look me up by my social security number if I wanted to give them that. Oh, as well. that's even. It's like oh, that's really handy. Yeah, Thanks, guys. Right. <laughs> I use uh, different secret words for everything. And just like I use, I use, and I use different passwords for every as you should every place where I have an account. So I kind of extended that to the secret words. But then when they always ask me like, "What's the the, the secret word or the password uh, for your account?" I just go, "Well, it's this." And there's no reaction. Or it's this. Or it's this. Or it's this. <laughs> or it's this. 
Watch this? They're like, that's it. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I know that the statistically I'm not going to land on just a random word, yeah. you know, six times in, but <laughs> it's just funny. I'm just like, <laughs> what's the password? <laughs> You're there five minutes. Oh, no, that's it. Okay, great. I have Come a on. pretty good way of getting around phishing calls. Never answer my phone. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> good never. call. No. I don't know where my phone is right now. My phone is missing. It's in your crotch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do I'm trying to look at my most recent calls. It seems like since the new year, I've been getting calls from telemarketers a lot more. Mm -hmm. Like they something just, reset. Let's do the roof these days. Yeah, I mean, it's all day. I get tons of fake calls that are like 512 and then the first three digits of my oh, yeah. phone number. And then the last four are different. Like, who does, what does that feel like? I At least I appreciate that because I know like, oh, I know this is not a real call. Like I can, right. I can hang this one up. I have the longest block list of 512 XXX numbers. It's ridiculous. Every day I get a new one though. That's terrible. It, it got to run out of permutations at some point. It's only what, 10,000 <laughs> of them? Yeah. <laughs> what would you, in, in the list of things, is the first thing you have to cut off one thing. And one of the things let's say is internet. My pinky. Oh. Or like, like running water, electricity, uh, heat, let's say if you have gas, that's separate. Trash service, internet, cable television, voice phone calls. Heat. You cut off heat first? Yes. Say, you would? Yes. I cut I off I could put TV. clothes and blankets on. Trash can fire. I cut off voice phone calls. I just, oh, yeah. Oh, voice. Oh, yeah. You're right. I didn't even consider that one. I was yeah. like, if you have like internet, garbage. are you talking about like cellular call is different to a Wi Fi? You just call? wouldn't have a phone number. Like people say, hey, what's your phone number? So I can call you. Go, I don't have one. You, here's my, here's a number where you can text me. And but you oh, just so you can't still get, have data. But you can't get you can't get calls. Could they like call you on WhatsApp or something? Just no voice calls. I, I don't know. Sometimes you need to call customer service. It's true. Mm. Sometimes to, you do. Could you use issue. the payphone in this scenario? Pay, yeah. If you can find one. You live? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They're I, all over I, Canada. I know where there's a payphone. I can find one. You really? Yeah. I feel like there's, there's a one store not, far. not too far from here yeah. that has one. Yeah. There's payphone. Fuck no. There's no payphones anywhere. No, there's payphones. There's payphones at the airport. Lots lots at the airport. Remember pay TVs at the airport? Yeah, yeah. I remember those. Yeah, no. that seemed like the future to me. Now. Remember there was like, like the oldest thing ever. For a brief period of time, there were these pay phones where you could go and put like two bucks a quarters in them, and it would have a little screen on it, and it would show you the weather at whatever your destination was. Oh, like it, it, they would put them at airports, and you'd be like, you know, you could type in whatever city you're going to, and it would show you like a five-day weather forecast. Life was so hard. Payphone is a terrible name for payphone. It doesn't it's, really differentiate. What would from you call it? A public... Landline. Rent a phone? Why well, do I mean, pay, you pay for every phone you use? Well, I pay yeah, for my mobile I pay for my iPhone. But then you when I pick this up, I don't have to jam quarters into it or anything like that. Can you yeah, imagine every you time you use your phone, you have to swipe your <laughs> card to use it? It's, so it's a pay per use phone. So is that what you would call it? Is it a pay per use? So you would and, I, and then I was showing it's a pay phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see why they did it. Yeah. Yeah, there came full circle on that one. And I'm sure the phone you already own, it's a pay per use phone as well. Oh, it's prepaid. Is it? Nope. You got a burner? No. <laughs> <laughs> you prepay for like a whole month. You don't pay per call, is what I mean. But you have like a block that you pay for to be able to, to use out of. See, there's some what stuff that's lost of time, though, because we don't have pay phones, right? Because if I took you, Gus, you just had your birthday. How old are you? I did. Um, 40. 40 years old. Are you 40? Yeah. We didn't make a bigger deal about you being 40 that you're 40. We had a party. Had a party. Yeah. yeah, but that was just some, that was ironic. You see my gifts? I got gifts. What'd you get? I got. I got maybe the most practical gift I've ever received. Someone, oh, someone they got a photo of me. They, uh, <laughs> they had, wow. if you had gone to the party, you would have seen they had uh, baby photos of me. And uh, someone mailed, <laughs> oh, watch your drink there. Oh, someone mailed me the most practical, best gift I've ever received. Were you Asian? A book of stamps. <laughs> a book what? of stamps. That's they mailed investment. you stamps? They mailed me stamps. And I was like, oh, I'm going to use these. This is the best gift I've ever received. How much do you post things? Uh, it didn't matter. Those forever stamps, right? Yeah, they're forever stamps. Yeah, it's good. It's good forever. You know how long forever is? Forever. Uh. <laughs> I always wonder how much money is tied up in stamps in people's drawers and fucking jars of pennies. Someone all over the place. Someone came to my party from St. Louis and brought me St. Louis shot glasses. Mm -hmm. They also brought me my new favorite mirror. <laughs> Roulez. <laughs> That's pretty good. And I got some alcohol. I got some whiskey and some beer. Uh, the beer is behind me. Got right super there. Super jealous. I uh, got some model planes, which you can't see. They're over there on that so side. So it seems like you're actually enjoying your birthday. I got a, a card. Oh, Christ. Oh, that's a classic. That guy. He's all over Target. And, 
some, some other another card, some other various things. Yeah. So, so thank you everyone who brought me a gift. It was unnecessary, but I appreciate the the thought and the This is his way of fishing for more stuff. No, no, no. That's, it is. It's unnecessary. If you do that, you're I'm, done. I'm, so five minutes of the podcast now is every, you're going to be unboxing shit. Don't send me shit. I'm not unboxing shit. I'm just saying thank you. I, I appreciate your effort. Yeah, Gus does. There are people at the company who will ask for free shit on Twitter, and it drives most of us at this couch crazy when they do that. But then also there was, I remember there was one time when, uh, I forget who it was, they, I think it was just Achievement Hunter posted to the end, a P.O. box. And you were like so mad on, oh, yeah. on Twitter about it, yeah. you know, you were I like, just wrote, I just wrote, why? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember people? that. It doesn't make any sense. We've already can receive mail here. Play for free shit. We yeah. have a fucking address that's public that you can give out. That's a move. <laughs> like, we have, to we have a peel box. Stuff. Like, I've got an empty wallet. <laughs> 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 wink, wink. The hardest part for me is we go to like places like Sydney or now London, and someone walks up with something really awesome that's about this big. Somebody sent me. Uh, somebody, I gotta correct something by the way in a second here. Don't let me forget to do that. Uh, Somebody sent me or gave me this incredible board game, and I was just like, "How the fuck am I going to get this home?" Because you know it's international travel; you're just you're packed to the gills. So I think I'm just going to start bringing a separate suitcase for that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. Why doesn't Rooster Teeth have just like a container that we can all bung our gifts in? Yeah. No, well, that's a ship great, it. and we ship just it ship it back as a company as a part of the expense. Did I tell you we finally moved Ashley out of her storage unit on this trip to Sydney? Yeah. Oh wow. So all that, all like the surfboard and the <laughs> has it made it back yet? Snowboard or no? They're on a container. They'll probably be here in like. She's been here like what, like six years? It's like four, four or five years. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's over five years. I've never had a shipping container. She's been container. in Austin for five years. Yeah. What's the cost of a shipping container every month? They're very expensive. You mean a ship, a, a storage, a storage unit? Yeah. Yeah. It was like hundred and fifty bucks Australian. Every month? Yeah, but then every month she's like, if I don't pay it now, I'm gonna lose all my stuff. So every month it was worth it. Yeah, they, they hold your shit ransom. This was That's not ransom. a financially sound plan. And last time we went down, we got everything organized. The company was gonna come and move it out. They said, oh, you gotta be there when we move out. It's like, well, we're Ugh. back in the United States. So can you just have the manager of the place open it? And they're like, no. Like, I, I even tried to like, tr trust me, I went through this a thousand times. Like just calculating the cost. Calculating the cost of all the things in there, but it's all sentimental value. Could you pay someone who was local in that city to show up and pretend to be you? She had, yeah, she has friends that could have done that. I don't know if Yug could pass as Ashley, though. That would be a hell of an acting job for him to pull that off. Yeah, it's always annoying when you have to do something in person and it's really far away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like whenever I have to renew my visa, it's like I have to just be at the embassy on a certain date at a certain time, and then that's it. It's like, man, I wish I could have done that remotely. <laughs> I had a day today where I was uh, went through and did like killed a bunch of rats on my to do list, and the big thing was <laughs> oh god yeah I thought you were what phrasing oh by the way in Shadow of War which I just started playing that's how you get health you yeah, train rats, rats. <laughs> it's really weird and then they pop it's kind of gross you shoot them with a taser no you like uh. yeah, like this you just like do the thing the you do that it took me a long time to figure that out. It told me on the screen. It told me if I got to pay attention. For health. I was like, man, what, how the fuck do you regain health in this game? <laughs> <laughs> that game is uh, so much fun, and it's it's so well made, but it is like the same two minutes again and again and again It's a good two minutes. Yeah, but you're not, because you're fighting like 30 people at once, yeah. and you're just like flipping over them and then stabbing like stalking them. stalking and marking people and yeah. like silently killing them. Yeah. And I, the, that revenge system they have in that game is just, not, I love it. The nemesis system, mm -hmm. fucking love that. I've been playing... Wolfenstein 2, which I like, and I've been dying a lot for a game. I'm not, I'm not playing on the hardest difficulty. I'm, I don't think I'm playing on the second hardest difficulty. So I looked at what the achievement was for completing on the hardest difficulty, and less than 0.01% of gamers have it. Wow. And I'm not even going to bother trying. It's impressive when you get, you. it's a huge sense of accomplishment when you get those, though. Because I do some bits just over and over and over again because everything kicks off. Like, I try and stealth a lot of it, but once it kicks off, you're in real danger before you get... The second version mm -hmm. of who you are. Have you played that game? No, I haven't. It's but fun. Right, right now I'm doing. I watched it. Um, yeah. I like to watch games. I'm replaying Horizon Zero Dawn on ultra hard, in order uh, to re platinum it. So like, I, there's two. Excuse me. There's two trophies I need. It's I need to complete New Game Plus and I need to complete Ultra Hard, and I'm almost done on that. The New Game Plus Ultra Hard. The next time I sit down to play it, I'm gonna beat it, and it's gonna be my proudest accomplishment. Ever in video gaming, really? Is that difficult? Will be. It's just like so. You're into achievements now. No, no, trophies. Like that's it. Because I love that game so much. Right. Having done everything that's possible in that game, like knowing that 
I've experienced everything. I missed I've the first part of the story. Of you're saying Horizon? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm having to redo. Yeah, my. I just knew just by the way you're talking about. It, I missed the first part because I was checking something here, but I knew you were talking about Horizon because you definitely love that game. The game is so a good, lot. and I, 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 I'm glad that I waited so long. I because I finished it the first time probably almost a year ago now. I'm glad I waited so long because now I'm still like re-experiencing some story stuff and re like, oh right, that's how this happens. That's how that happens. It's a really, really great story. Great game. You should absolutely play it if you haven't. So I made a mistake a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think I was telling Steph when she was on the podcast about the Schmorgan Heckengard portrait that someone had autographed for me. And I mistakenly mm. transposed two of my friends in the community. I said it was Dom. It was that. Matt Corey that did uh. it. Yeah. Who's the gentleman who's took the Bernie bobblehead all the way down oh. to uh, it wasn't the bobblehead, it was a uh, Statue. I get. I'm gonna get everything wrong in association with this. Uh, it was a statue that he bought at Child's Play. Not Child's Play. Christ, what's wrong with me? <laughs> stop! Just stop. He took side quest mania. It was statue, the Bernie statue he bought. It was somebody made a mock up of it uh, that was sold at Side Quest, and then he got it here in RTX Austin, and then traveled all the way down to Bernie Tasmania with it. So, and then also got me my Schmorgan Heckengard, which I'm trying to find. It's in a frame, which he was nice enough to provide and send here. But it doesn't have a little hanger on the back. So I'm like in that process of trying to like put the hanger on and I completely put it on wrong. So now I've got to fix it. We have I'm, an art department for that. Yeah, it's exactly right. But they're all out hunting ghosts this week That's or something true. like that. Oh, right. I saw a picture. Are you not there? Yeah. Not right now. Yeah. Mm. All right. I saw a picture of a place they're filming today. It looks spooky as hell. There was like an old broken wheelchair. It, yeah, it was very It scary. sounds terrifying. Yeah. Why do ghosts like the same place? Like, why do they like the spooky aesthetic? Maybe the aesthetic is spooky because of the ghosts. Yeah, Could the ghosts make it spooky. Right, maybe like they, they, because they sh they're like, like shitting cobwebs and stuff. Right, like <laughs> like them being there is the presence that attracts these other things. And or people maybe, get the fuck out. And maybe right. it's harder to notice a ghost in a in a thriving environment such as this. If this were abandoned and you were God, alone, you're so warm. I'm, you're like, I'm fire. Really? She's she's warm for yeah. <laughs> a bun in the old oven. Maybe they uh, the range from their death point makes them weaker, so they just linger. Where they die. God, their death point? So what are you saying? That they that people die at spooky places? So they also shitload of ghosts in hospitals. like I believe in ghosts, yeah. which I well, don't. Well, hospitals so. are the most haunted You places. don't believe in ghosts? No. But you grew up like close to the Mexican border down in yes. South Texas. Very superstitious area. Very, it is. So do you believe in like all the other stuff like chupacabras and- No. What's the other stuff? What's the other thing? What? La Llorona? The Wendigo? What is that? What's what? the Wendigo? La, Wendigo? La Llorona, I think is what he's thinking yeah. about. Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah. The Lionora. Do you believe in <laughs> you believe that thing? You scared of that? No. No, I thought I, I'm not I've seen I'm the same way. I'm not I don't yeah. believe in ghosts I don't think I'm not scared, but I stayed at an Airbnb in New Zealand that I was convinced had a ghost Really? <laughs> it was like it was this old house that was built in the mid 1800s by a former prime minister of New Zealand And there was one room in it that still looked like original like with rough brick and uh, It's where the trash can was and at night like it was in a kind of a remote area so at night when the sun was down, there were no lights anywhere, and there was no sound. And I was like, I'm gonna go into this room, and I'm gonna turn on a fucking light, and there's gonna be a goddamn ghost there. But I didn't say anything, because I didn't want to scare Esther. So I went until, like, we were leaving from that Airbnb, and I was like, I was convinced we were gonna see some shit. <laughs> I was convinced that that place was fucking haunted. I didn't think Esther would be scared, though, was she? No, she was like, I was thinking the same uh. thing. <laughs> but she, she's the same way. She's not, she doesn't believe in ghosts, she's not scared but of didn't, that. But it's didn't just you a once place. wake up with, like, a demon set on your face or something? Yeah. But that was a, that was a um what's it called Roll sleep play. paralysis oh. hallucination <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if only uh, no it was a sleep paralysis hallucination and it's it's called the, the hag syndrome the, the hag yeah yeah like it's such a common occurrence it's awful it's yeah. the worst yeah haven't had it in years I'm gonna have it tomorrow because you you talked about it I know I am as people who have had kids and are about to do you know where your kids were conceived yeah or is it kind of like a yeah, I think so. I think so. Becca was very enthusiastic about that. Yeah. No, I mean, well, with Clem, it was like you know, our bed at home, which was whatever. <laughs> but, it was what? <laughs> our bed at home. <laughs> What's up? What's up, bed? Pretty routine, but um, this one was conceived in in Montreal, because oh. I was charting everything down to a T. I was like, we got we got to get on this, and so we're staying in this. Were you guys house. more like active? <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm trying to get the right word that doesn't sound like a bunch of bang. Right. Were you more purposeful in this oh, yes. conception. We were like going through fertility treatments and everything. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So everything was mapped out. I had a chart of when we should start 
doing it and how far apart to like get the maximum strength and climb, of the it was sperm. Just like, ba bam. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Shit happens. It's all very, very clinical. But in Montreal, so that's kind of a cool story. Got a little Canadian baby. Yeah. Canadian baby. Yeah. Montreal kind of adds a cool little bit of romanticism back into the clinicalness so it evens out. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Would you ever have your kid like what would be if you traveled to have a kid in another country? I always read this on the inbound declarations of when you're going into a country, and they're usually countries where they have socialized medicine. Obviously, if you come into the country to have a baby, that's a huge cost to that country. Mm. So it's one of the questions I ask, are you here to have a baby? And it's like, no, but that's a great idea if saving costs. But like, you're not covered by their socialized health care. Like when we were in, in Montreal, I, I thought baby's Clem was- born there, it is, right? Oh, well, I guess the baby. First half's on you. you. <laughs> yeah, because I thought I was going to have to take Clem to the doctor because she had a fever. Yeah. And I started looking up what to do, and it's pretty expensive. You have to pay out of pocket. So. Because you don't pay the taxes of that country, it makes right. sense. Yeah, but like, if you had to go to another country and have a kid, like, what's the best country to have dual citizenship with? Ooh, there's different values to different passports. I think Austria is a good good one to have. What's what's, what's good about that? I, I think, think just the, like the amount of countries that you can go and work in from an Austrian passport. It might not be Austrian. Could I be think us. German is the best one. German? It's like the, it's one of those European ones. <laughs> really? Yeah. Behind like, like the U.S. How times change. Well, Germany is really close to a bunch of different countries too. Right, I mean, it's got that EU access. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the United States is like number three. I would definitely want to be in the EU. Really? What? I, well, the, the U.S. one is always if you go if you get dual citizenship somewhere else, they just kill your U.S. Well, the U.S. has limitations on. I mean, the U.S. is great if you want to live in the U.S., but you can't really work in a lot of other places on a U.S. passport. Yeah, we're fucking it up worse and worse. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, there's a site. Passportindex.org that rates the power ranking of passports. Yeah, there's like which second passport is the most is the best. <laughs> Where's North De Korea? Depending. <laughs> what does a North Korean passport look like? Do they even have one? Do they, I don't yeah. even know. North Korea. I found it. I'm gonna pull it up. North Korea passport. Wait, where'd it go? What do you think? It's blue. Is the amount of documentation and, and work you have to do in order to get a North Korean passport? Jesus Christ. I assume it's like, completely impossible you for You have to be us. born into it, I would have to assume. I mean, for us, yeah. No way. We should try. The next doc. I imagine like 90% of North Korean passports, though, you get to the border from somewhere, like, they stamp it, they stamp it, and they go like this, and the person goes, ah, you keep it. <laughs> I'm not going to need that again. Thanks, It's crazy though. how every passport on the planet seems to follow the same exact format. Yeah, North mm -hmm. Korea and South Korea. Passport. Like, do you have to meet certain requirements for it to be considered a passport by the planet? Yeah, well, travel's kind of like that. Like, you, every pilot in the world has to speak English. Just, it's the language of mm -hmm. aviation. And uh, air traffic control. Yeah. Hmm. Which kind of goes hand in hand. So either, you even, said pilot, come on. Don't be, a fuck, don't be a fucking dick. They can talk to each other, Even too. North Korean <laughs> air traffic control speaks English? That's a really good question. Because I bet they I don't, don't think they get a lot of commercial traffic there. Oh, like deliveries and stuff? But they probably do. FedEx? Maybe they don't. I mean, North Korea might make a really hard exception for that. Yeah. So I have, I have a friend who ran a marathon in North Korea. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. so many other places you can run. I know, but he did it. He was living in Seoul. And he's like from Connecticut and lived in Austin for a long time. And he was working in Seoul and decided, you know, while I'm here, I might as well do this crazy thing. And he went into North Korea. But, you know, even though it was like a couple hundred miles from Seoul, he had to fly to Shanghai first to then fly into North Korea. And he said it was the weirdest experience. He wrote about it on a Medium post or a series of a few. And he immediately regretted his decision to do this. You could tell he was really scared. Like The it, entire time? Yeah, he said everyone on the flight that was a Westerner was either there for, like, you know, some risky, crazy adventure, the marathon, or, like, someone who's really wealthy and has gotten to a point in their life where they're, like, that's the obtainable thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not a place that I would want to go visit <laughs> like that. Well, I mean, you yeah. hear stories about that student, like, the... the that auto died. guy who nicked yeah. the thing, and then they gave him back, and he was dead. No, he he was mostly dead. <laughs> yeah, he'd yeah, been he in a coma like straight. the entire mm -hmm. time. Came back. Right. Yeah, it's so messed up. Yeah, whatever happened with that guy? Like, whatever happened with auto warm beer? Was there an investigation as to how do you investigate? There, I think there was. They looked. They did an autopsy, and they concluded that there. I think there wasn't any true sign of. Abuse. You went to North that Korea. caused the, the lack of brain activity, but there was definitely 
something that caused it, but they weren't able to pinpoint it enough to where they but could it had hold been anyone so long, responsible. I'm sure. yeah. Yeah, like it already got out of his system, whatever it was. Right, or like mm -hmm. all the bruises it healed, or oh, whatever God. it was. You ever been anywhere that you really regret going there? Like was, this is a bad idea. Hmm. I mean, shortly, like little little periods of time. There's some areas in Puerto Rico where oh, I yeah. probably should not have gone. Um, I had that some border towns in Mexico where yeah. I like turned the wrong way. It was like. Anything could happen to me at this point in time. Went yeah, to, yeah, I went to Juarez. Definitely regretted that. Yep. I had that moment in San Antonio not too long ago in December. I was very surprised. I went to a Thai restaurant that I found on Yelp that had excellent reviews, and I thought I was going to die. I truly thought I was going to get murdered in there. And I in went the back. restaurant? Yeah. And I went back and read the reviews, and they were all from people who did delivery. No one actually ate at the restaurant. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I went and gave a very honest review of someone who had eaten there, saying... I thought I was going to die. Sorry. No is that baggage. restaurant still around? How yeah. long ago was that? Uh, two and a half months ago. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it was really recent. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So you were pregnant and you thought you were going to yeah. get murdered. And, and I had my whole family with me. Everyone. And Clem's like running around. And was it you who door. chose that place? Yes, I felt so bad. Well, <laughs> it, was, it was by consent. I sent out a few different options and people voted on that place and I enthusiastically backed it. But yeah, I, I basically was responsible. <laughs> Gus, we're filming the uh, 15th year anniversary doc right now, mm -hmm. which is about the 15 years of Rashid, the history not of Rashid. Right now, right now. But we're not. Well, they're here somewhere filming. They were. But uh, I've been going through old stuff, and I found a trip that you and Jeff and Griffin and I took to Eagle Pass. And I think Frank was with I us, too. I remember that, yeah. And then we went over to Piedras mm -hmm. across the border. But there's this weird offshoot where we're in an abandoned building with, like, a vault and everything like that. And we're all, we're I remember that. all really excited to be there. And I couldn't remember what the fuck that was from. I think that was the old courthouse. Yeah. And we were like looking at jail cells yeah. and stuff. But it was like, I don't know, we all just thought it was, I yeah, guess, we were like stuck in. I think we were just like looking for cool buildings. Yeah. And, uh, and we snuck in there. Yeah, I've been going through, I found a ton of old uh, photos that we've never released over like the last 15 years. A lot I of them from like the really early years. Like I found a couple of hard drives that I'd forgotten about. Would you be willing to dump those for like if... Yeah, I, I they offered, don't make it in the doc. I offered them to um, like the marketing people. I, f I forgot to offer the doc people, and they're gone now. Really? Yeah. Why were you looking at it then? Oh, I was getting ready for it, and I just forgot. Like, ah, I, like, okay. This was this was a couple of months ago. Like, I found these hard drives uh, end of last year, and I thought I should save these now because they're going to be useful in the future. Oh shit! That was how? <laughs> how? Okay, that was the Mother worst fucker. one ever. <laughs> that was. How? Got all over Gus's laptop. Thanks. This is replacing the one that got water dumped on it. And now, so that time, let's see if a laptop can survive beer dumped so that, right on it. <laughs> that time, I saw it rising up, and I was like, "I'm gonna stay ahead of it." I put my finger in, and it just. <laughs> it turned I think into, that made it worse. It turned into a super jet. Don't worry. Just get out of here. That's a really nice laptop too. Thank you. It is a really nice laptop. Yeah. I can't wait for you to buy me a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had it a couple months. I just got, actually I just got this last month. Fucking brand new. Look, you know who you sit next to. You know to better. Yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> fucking, bla fucking victim blame. That's the way to go. It's fucking Harvey Weinstein over here. Oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's an extreme hey, so comparison. They, uh, they're gonna file for bankruptcy. Who? The Weinstein Group or whatever. <laughs> what a fucking shock. Yeah. That is. <laughs> no, they had a sale. There. They were trying to push through. The sale didn't happen, so now they're gonna file for bankruptcy. Can't we just buy it cheap? <laughs> that's really interesting. How, how much to buy that company? Oh. What are the assets? Don't, don't you think that the, the, this is all a ploy, right? Like they're Gonna declare bankruptcy. They're gonna sell for cheap, and then someone else who has equity in the company's gonna buy it, like, at a ridiculously low price. Like, I'll buy it for a dollar. There you go. Now you have it. It's just like a uh, like a like a paper name shuffle kind of deal. What's uh, Harvey's brother's name? Bob Bob Weinstein. Mm -hmm. So he might do that. Mm -hmm. like, well, wasn't he already like the main guy? Or might I think do I have it backwards? That'd be it's the, the bro greatest brothers to me. The greatest challenge would be to buy that company, keep the name, and turn it around into a successful Jesus. business. <laughs> no. No, do you no think that's an imp completely impossible? Uh, no, why would you do that? I mean, that has so many negative associations with it. Just because you need a challenge in life? <laughs> you got enough money? You like like you the people who just go to North Korea for sh shits and giggles? Um, On a completely unrelated note, did you see that Machinima just went through a rebrand? <laughs> they redid they? their logo? Yeah. I, I didn't know that. It's like a green and black kind of a... They got rid of that shitty red circle one? The big red M, or yeah. whatever it was? Yeah. Red M. Hey. I don't know, that was a pretty well-known logo, but I think there was just so much... Oh, Brand. I see. Yeah, it was yeah. It, it, it was a well-known logo, but it wasn't done very well. I didn't think. Um, speaking of Machinima, uh, Hugh Hancock passed away. Yeah, a that was kind of nuts. Pas right. Passed away very suddenly. Yeah, he was like, I couldn't believe that. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Not very old at all. Hugh Hancock is the gentleman who was so early 
in the machinima scene, he's the person who gave it a name. You know, he was, the, I mean, for lack of a better term, he's basically the creator of the machinima movement. Not the company machinima, but the genre machinima of which Red vs. Blue is a part. Took a lot of time building that community, too. He did. He really <laughs> did. And people like we knew back then, like, you know, Paul Marino, who we still know to this day, was we were all, like, completely shocked that Hugh Hancock passed away. It was just, uh, came out of nowhere. And yeah, I, he was super young. It's a really, really tragic. Early 40s, maybe, I think? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think you're right. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was like, we, I don't, I don't remember, I don't think I ever met Hugh Hancock, but we definitely ran in the same circles as him, you know, especially in the early years. You really uh, never met him before? Over, I don't think I ever met him face to face. Interesting. I haven't, I hadn't seen him in a number of years, you know. Um, but I think, I, I really do think machinima as a genre evolved from being what was going to be a narrative storytelling method into more of a personality delivery system. Like, I think, I think Let's Play, the whole Let's Play phenomenon is eventually what Machinima evolved into. Yeah. Like, they, you know, you look at a Twitch streamer, they're Machinima artists, but they're Machinima artists who they, they're are pl they're yeah, expressing the their personality. They're not telling right. a story or anything like that. They're, they're just, you know, expressing their personality. So I think that's what happened with it. Kind of like the difference if you have a television show, one that's scripted, and one that's like a talk show, mm -hmm. something like that. You also see that Kevin Smith had a huge heart attack? Yeah, I saw that this yeah. morning. I mean, I'm not surprised, but... Well, I mean, he's in great well, shape pretty heavy. Days. Yeah, so he's, yeah. Like, he, I just saw photos of him and thought, wow, he's lost a ton of weight. Good for him. Next day, yeah. massive I, I guess it's like all previous damage, like yeah. one of his arteries <laughs> apparently 100% blocked. He was doing a show, like he had two yeah. shows scheduled for that night. Yeah, two shows. He had just finished the first one, started feeling sick. Decided to cancel the second one and go to the hospital good instead. On him. Yeah, it's a good thing you went. They, I mean, he probably would have passed away if he had stayed and tried to yeah. do the second show. That's what he they said in his that. tweet. The yep. doctor said he would have died if he didn't go. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing too. Is like just hearing that he canceled the second show. Um, you do hear about that from performers, like when somebody gets sick in a concert tour or something like that. I think Kanye was just in the middle of settling something mm -hmm. about a canceled tour. It's a big fucking deal. Like I cannot yeah. recall the last time we, that we canceled an yeah, event if, or a show. If we were out. Doing a show and we had two of them and we, I felt like shit between them. I'd be like, no, 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 we got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do the second one. We're gonna get through it. I'll go after yep. this. Then you would probably be dead. Right. Yeah. It's just so good on him for doing it, you know, and realizing he had a situation going on. It yeah. must have felt way more serious than anything he felt before. He said he felt a heaviness in his chest and he is nauseous and then threw up and sweaty. I think that's what they're all the quite a bit. big symptoms. Yeah, but it, I was reading Reddit today, and to be fair. I would imagine that a lot of people who read Reddit look a lot like Kevin Smith. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, he's like an inspiration for, you know, just the stylistically the way a lot of people dress. You know, <laughs> that he figured out a way for the heavy dude to look like a cool dude. And uh, I think there's probably a lot of people that are on Reddit on those forums that are probably thinking, holy shit. You know, there's probably a lot of those dudes, over overweight, nerdy dudes who are having a lot of panic attacks today. You know, mm -hmm. I imagine that's Which feels like place. a heart attack. Which, which feels like a heart yeah. attack, which <laughs> scares the shit out of you. Yeah, even worse. Well, that's good for... Uh... For awareness, at least, like, I agree. Like getting, I agree. That, getting that story out there and letting people know, yeah, how serious I'm it is. I'm just so it feels glad like. he survived, dude. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's like Kevin Smith is out of there's three people that I consider to be like huge inspirations for me on a filmmaking level, and I've gotten to meet two of them, and Kevin Smith is one of them. We got to do a panel with him a few years ago, and he was just like such a nice dude, and he's like just like I remember coming up in the late '90s, you know, with the independent film like Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, and Kevin Smith. It's just like. Such an influential dude. It's like to think we were like that close to losing him. You mm -hmm. know, who's the third one? I just named him. Yeah, yeah Robert. Tarantino. Robert Tarantino Quentin Tarantino. The one, yeah, the I, one you didn't meet. Yeah, I never met Quentin Tarantino, but uh, he was hugely influential on me. I got to see the North American premiere of Pulp Fiction. Did which you? Was at Hog Auditorium. How the fuck oh did my you God. see that? It was at Hog Auditorium. What? Like it had won uh, the Cannes Film Festival, and the first showing they ever had of it, Richard Linklater brought him th them here. And Quentin introduced it, and it's like, yeah, and this we're you gonna. You were in college then, right? Yeah, I was in college. And, wow, uh, saw Pulp I didn't Fiction. know. I didn't fucking. Awesome. Twenty years I've known you. Didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know it was at Hog Auditorium? No, I didn't know that either. Premiere. Yeah, or the I shouldn't say premiere because that's usually an event, but right. it was the first showing of uh, yeah. Pulp Fiction in North America. That's crazy. Besides, of course, like screening rooms and stuff. I'm sure there were test screenings. I'm film. qualifying this. I was there at the first one. <laughs> fucking. Hell. That's a great film. I still watch it every now and then on Netflix. Yeah. You see that gnarly Uma Thurman crash? God, that was awful. That yeah. was fucking nuts. That was a serious impact. That sucked, dude. Yeah. I totally missed this. So was one of the things that's like kind of an offshoot of the Me Too movement is Uma was very upset with the Harvey Weinstein. Did you, did you see that interview she done the red carpet where she was seething? Yes. Yeah, and she said she's going to have some things to say. Well, it, it, something that was part of that 
got to be careful about the way you say this kind of stuff because you want to implicate somebody in something they're not involved with. But apparently the story was that Quentin Tarantino uh, forced her or compelled her to do a driving scene in Kill Bill and she didn't feel safe, expressed that she didn't feel safe. They had a very heated conversation about it. He essentially he can't make anybody get in a car and drive it, but he was like, you need to do this. She drove, she fucking wrecked the car and like oh. straight into a tree. Yeah, I, I think she was trying to get a stunt she performer. Was, she, she wanted a stunt performer because the car had been modified and didn't handle like normal. And I think even the stunt performers wanted to do yeah. the driving. And but, then the, and then he was apparently saying that she had to drive above a certain speed, otherwise her hair wouldn't blow correctly. That's right. I don't even really understand it because it's, the shot is the back of her head. Yep. Very easy to put anyone else Super in that. Super easy. Yeah, and she crashed into a tree or something. Yeah. And there's, and with a there's really footage, old car, like, you, like the, no, the footage came out. No airbag. The camera that's mounted there, and so then she crashes, and obviously she's driven away from the crew. There it is. And it takes she's a long time for anybody to there. get to her. Boom. Oh, Oof. Jesus. Yeah, she oh, like, yeah. hit her head. And it's like an old car, no airbags. Yeah. yeah. You know, those things are death traps to begin with. She has no headrests even on the seat, mm -hmm. which is something to consider about when she goes back, too. Because I'm sure they either did, those didn't exist or they pulled them out because it looked better. Right. You want to see the hair. Exactly right. <laughs> And so, yeah, and then I there was some uh, talk about how uh, there was a huge conflict over whether or not she could get the <clears> footage, <throat> and the footage just now came out, and she had been trying to get the footage for years and years but and like years. like 15 years now. So, yeah, she just kept trying to get the footage, and she couldn't get it. And, you know, there was a lot of personal stuff that was said in some of these articles, like that, you know, in interviews where, you know, they were friends, mm -hmm. and they, they were, you know, you know, creative collaborators, and it sucks to watch this stuff fall apart. But it has been kind of... I don't know if heartwarming is the right word, it, word, but it's been it's it's been nice to watch them also make peace. Something I didn't know existed, and there was bad blood between them for so long, and they seem to be making peace with it, mm -hmm. you know, publicly, which yeah. is is nice to see. I think uh, people forget how much of a collaboration that is. I mean, I think it, it's credited as concept by Q and U, like by both of them. Yeah, they both created as you know, as credited as creators for you know that couple those couple of films. Huh. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll eventually get the the third one that they always talked about. Oh really? I don't think I ever saw the second one. It's good. It's really good. I, I think I didn't like the second one very much when it came out, but as I've gotten older, I've gone back and rewatched it, and I like it. I have a greater appreciation for it. I like it a lot more. Like I do appreciate the decision to have that done as a real shot and like not do it against the screen with a fan or whatever. But there's no reason to have the act to do that in that specific shot. I don't see the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. So you haven't seen the second one. Mm -mm. Did you see the scene in the living room with the girl who comes home from school, or is that in the second? That's one? in the first one. Is in the first one? It's Vivica Fox's kid. I, I, was, I saw it a long time ago. Yeah, she comes in and the but the, if you're the house the is all one? messed up, <laughs> and uh, she's like, "What happened? Like your dog got away and made this mess?" Yeah, that's her. Okay. Yeah. Well, the moment that I always remember from it too is when, you know, at the end of that fight scene, uh, when Uma talks to the little girl. Mm -hmm. Said, if you're still sore about this in 20 years, come see me. You know what I mean? It's like to me, that's like such a setup for oh, yeah. at least a short film. Like 30 <laughs> well, that years was supposed now. to be the concept. Twin Peaks that was the concept for the third film. It was it really? What, yeah, was the Vivica Fox's daughter getting older and training with Daryl Hannah to then take revenge on Uma Thurman? I fucking love Daryl Hannah. Oh yeah, I love her. She's amazing. She, like lives like in the middle of nowhere. Drives a tractor that's run by French fry grease. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm fascinated. Every time something about Daryl Hannah comes up, I have to read it. I'm absolutely fascinated. She does not in any way live a conventional life. It's awesome. I love to see that stuff. I don't know that. I want to ride a tractor powered by French fries. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm, really, <laughs> I'm sure you can find one in Austin. She's big about like biofuel and stuff mm -hmm. like that and sustainable living and everything. It's just, and she was talking about that stuff way ahead of the curve, way before anybody else was. I feel like biofuel was starting to gain traction. We don't hear about it at all anymore. I feel like Tesla and Electric vehicles have really steal, stolen a lot of that thunder. Mm -hmm. I, it's just like solar is going to take it all away. Why waste time with anything else? You have a technology that's going to solve the whole problem. If the sun goes out, we're fucked. Granted, there are parts of the world that probably don't get enough sun to really run off solar power. You know, and that's, you know, those people can die. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like there, there are parts of the world, especially like northern Europe, I would imagine, Gus, or Gav, if you had solar panels in the UK, yeah. that might be a waste of money. Yeah, I, th I think even in a... In a place like the south of England, the difference between the longest day and the shortest day is about eight hours. Wow! Like you have a, you have a in the middle of winter you have a you have daylight of like slightly under eight hours, and then it's like seventeen hours in the summer or something. Yeah. Did you read all the hubbub when we were in Australia about his battery that kicked in? His like he had some battery? big battery installation in oh right Australia yeah, yeah right yeah that a power engine like kicked over in like point three seconds and saved 
everyone from having a power outage. It was so like, it didn't drop power long enough to lose power to things? That's exactly right. That's cool. Oh. So then they have to let people know, otherwise how would they know, you know? We had power one minute to the next, they don't go, ooh, that was great, you know? Yeah. If, if your lights in your house go like, Whew, you don't ever go, what was that? What happened? <laughs> you just go like, get me the phone. <laughs> 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 or, uh, you know what I do when that happens? I start, start turning stuff off, because I know yeah. it's coming, that it's gonna, it's gonna shut itself mm -hmm. off. I, I had a thing in my house where the hairdryer would always dim the lights, blast it on, and the lights would go, Hoo. And if I went up above a certain speed on my treadmill, the lights would get yeah. dimmer until they all just went off. That was <laughs> happening to me. I sent you a power strip that fixed it. You, I don't know if you ever got it. You don't listen to me. I probably didn't. Yeah. But I went through like 10 power strips to fix really? it. It was, it was a bitch. I went through a number of LED light bulbs to figure out which ones were dimmable and which ones weren't. Mm. Because LED light bulbs do not dim the same way as regular so incandescent. So reduce the voltage, that, well, they just go flickering? They just go, they go like 100%. 66% off. <laughs> yeah. Or even worse, some of them get down to like the bottom of the dimming range and they just start going blink, 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 yeah. blink. Like they build up enough power to turn on and yeah. then they turn back and off. They again. Discharge it off. Can I can I can I vent a little bit about uh Tesla for a second? This is uh -huh. the appropriate platform for that. Okay. Which I normally don't do because I, I got love, Tesla stuff to talk about too. I love so. Tesla and SpaceX and all that stuff. Everyone is super excited about <laughs> <laughs> what they're so ready to go. I must be on a physical Boom. button in there. Did you warn with that oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> They have it ready to go. They got like a shortcut for it. Uh, the um, this this car they ejected into space, Roadster. I didn't like it. I thought it was, and I couldn't put my finger on why I didn't like it. Like I thought it was goofy or it didn't take uh, space exploration seriously enough. And I finally figured out what it is that I don't like about the fact that they put a fucking Tesla in space. Is it because no one can have one yet? No, that's his, that's the old road. Oh, it's the old road. That's the original, the pro, yeah. like the prototype. Oh, okay. no, I've seen one of those in Austin, by the way. They are fucking tiny. They're tiny. Like yeah. you have to sit. It's like you're sitting on the ground when you get into it. The original road is tiny. Yeah, I say though, I saw a Lamborghini. I went to go register my car today, and somebody was registering. I guess a Lamborghini there is red Lamborghini. That's fuck. That's a cool car. I drove by the Lamborghini dealership over there on Lamar. Yeah. The other day, and uh, there was one that was peeling out of the parking lot, and it's like it it's license plate with zero kids. <laughs> <laughs> this one's. I, I don't know. I guess we can say it. His license plate was Steak X, and I don't know what that means. Steak dash X, hmm. like steak, like a meat steak dash X. I don't know what X. that was. Anyway, cool car. Maybe it's like SpaceX, but Steak X. Uh, maybe so. Yeah. Maybe so. Putting steaks into space. That's right. They're he's very gonna, low cost. He's going to privatize the steak industry. That's what he's. You can do. drive <laughs> under some parking barriers in a Lamborghini. Is that true? Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, because you so can cool. save money on those fucking parking <laughs> garage. It's like the one person who doesn't need to sneak out. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm such a wet blanket that my whole thing with it, I'll look at it and I'll go, that car's cool. And then I go, ooh, that car's too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't want to be in a fucking loud ass car. How much money do you have to have to the point where it's wise to buy like a $250,000 It's Lamborghini? never wise. I have, I have a rational I have a formula. Okay. If you make that in a year, what the car costs, then you can do it. No. No way. No. Are you serious? Yeah. Absolutely One not. One year? I mean, it scales. So, so, so let's back that up. A person who makes 40k a year buying a 40k car. Yeah. That doesn't sound outrageous. It's just so extravagant. Oh, it is super extravagant. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Crazy. I, I, like I agree on the lower end, but on the high end, it's like that $250,000 car doesn't add four times the value of a $60,000 car. Well, it never, like, you can make that argument however much money you have, right? If you're a single that's dude. That's the argument I'm making. That's it. If you're a very rich single dude, then buy that car. Can we for one year pay back a the amount of a Lamborghini and see if she yeah, buys Yeah, yeah, I like this idea. Well, you're just saying, why don't we just give Becca give a Lamborghini? Lamborghini? No, 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 the decision has to be hers. Oh, also, like, she has other bills as well, not just the Lamborghini. What would it, what would it, like, a monthly payment on a $250,000 car be? If God damn you put, it. let's say you put, My Google search so you put 40000 down, so $210,000. First of all, any bank would go, you're not buying that car. Get the yeah, fuck out of here. $210,000. We're not financing this let's, loan. Let's say 1% interest over. 1%? Where the fuck are you getting your loan at? I have great credit. <laughs> Uh, you, you cannot 1%. get one percent. You said two hundred ten thousand. Uh huh. In five years. Can you walk into the Lamborghini dealership and go? Yeah, I want to talk to the finance department. <laughs> I'm gonna give you <laughs> one. I'm gonna give that? you one point four nine because oh. that's the lowest I've seen advertised anywhere for a car loan. I think you should give I it around two point point eight. Not for a car? Yeah. I think we say Lamborghini a few more times, we might get one. For free. So, uh, two hundred ten thousand dollars. I'll give you your fucking one percent. I don't believe you. Uh, <laughs> at sixty months, your monthly payment's thirty six hundred dollars a month. Yeah, I can. I can yeah. Yeah. yeah, the monthly payment per month. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's just like having a house. It's just like yeah, buying, yeah, paying yeah. a mortgage. Or Gavin, I got to say remember this. Dory drove a Bentley. Who did? A, Dory. You remember oh, that? yeah. Yeah. And Her I, friend I was, like married this rich dude. And, how's that working out? Are they still together? No. no. Oh, of that course sucks. Yeah. That happens. <laughs> did she get half, a, half his shit? Yeah, but he was broke. So. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Really? Yeah. Half a Bentley, right down the middle. <laughs> that got repoed. But yeah, like I, I, I drove her car and That's was like, rough. this is like twice the value of my house that I'm driving around. Too much. Could wreck. Uh, it's yeah. too much for something that someone could just drive into. I want to point something out. $3,600, that is about $1,500 less than Gavin would be as my sugar baby. So... That's wait. You were so you were getting five thousand. It was like fifty. That's what sugar babies make. Oh yeah. right, right. Four hundred a month to be that's a sugar like, baby. What, what colors? A Lam- sugar baby could buy a Lambo. Yeah. Oh, what shit. what colors yeah. your Lamborghini gonna be? If I had a Lamborghini, it'd be matte black. Mm. I like that. Yeah. 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 That's cool. But you gotta be like, you gotta be Bat-mobile. sugar baby for five years. If I was off. if I was still a child, maybe bright yellow. But you know, I'm older now. Oh yeah, you're more sensible. As you get older, your taste in Lamborghinis will change. Yeah, I would never buy a Lamborghini. I would go and buy. <laughs> no, I, uh, it's just a, I think it's a personality thing. I would like my ultimate car that I'll never buy is a Rolls Royce. That to really? me is like yeah, it's just it's it's more like I, I'm one of the more like comfort versus sporty. Like I like a uh, Infinity versus say a BMW. You know, I just like I like more like like no road noise. Greatest thing in the world. Just like if you, because to me, driving is like a chore. Hey, I have a question for you. Stick shift. People drive stick shift. Get like the stick fuck shift. out of here. I know. I have a question for you. <laughs> why do you hate the road through in space? Here's why I don't like it. This is not weird. I'm talking about Lamborghini <laughs> for about four or five minutes. Okay. I like Tesla a lot. I like SpaceX a lot. Why did they put a Tesla in space? But you know why? Why? Because they needed a weight simulation. That is correct. And they didn't want to send a lump of concrete. Why not? Boring. Okay, but why did they choose a Tesla? Because we're, we're talking about it. No, but, but why? Elon what Musk the, is involved with both. Because he owns both. There you go. It's marketing. And they put marketing in space. That's what I like about it. If they built a 20-ton concrete Big Mac and launched that into space, people would be very fucking pissed about that. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. And why you, would they? They would be... F- <laughs> you kidding me that they're launching a fucking Big Mac into if space? If someone could buy the rights to whatever thing he put in the thing and it was a giant concrete Big Mac... You gotta appreciate that. I think once you start commercializing space in that <laughs> regard, I know when you talk about commercialization, Man, goddamn you mean space billboards. What is, dude, dude? There are people working on technology to put ads on the moon. You know? Can you imagine if you had to fucking look up the moon? There's a goddamn <laughs> Kentucky Fried I think Chicken Taco logo Bell on it. Taco Bell investigated it back in the '90s. Yeah, right? oh, but man. it's so smart. Because it's such an effort to change it. And it's so fucking dumb. Like, who's g- like, going to be a long time what if the rockets they got any like- return on that investment? <laughs> <laughs> Would you remember the million dollar homepage where each pixel was a dollar? Yeah. You could have like the billion dollar billboard that just sits up in space and each block of it is a million dollars. Oh, right. and you there. could like remotely change it? Like you have like some kind of... No, secure... it should be permanent. It should be like, bam. No, that way you could resell it. Be like, awful. I don't know. But no, no, the one's future gonna... you're describing is terrible. That's awful. I've it's never it's seen awful Fifth for Element? everyone except the person who's made a billion dollars off of it. Gavin, <laughs> let's go in on this. A billion dollar billboard. 500 million each. <laughs> well, slightly less because Becca's running ad blocks. So you yeah. can make Sorry, it a little guys. bit less Sorry. than that. There's, there's no way you can block that one. You can fucking look at the moon. <laughs> no, whatever. I have like smart eyes by then. I can, yeah. 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 AR would just eyes. put blur over it. <laughs> yeah, there's a scene in Altered Carbon where he puts in contacts that then make all the advertisements show up. It's like, I would, don't oh, put in I those know. contacts. I saw that. Just don't wear those <laughs> ever. Just seemed like a nightmare. We're, it seems like we're not far from that technology. As though. Yeah, it becomes sure. easier for private companies to access space and eventually the public. There's going to have to be so much space law done. I, I think it'd be worth it now to study to become a space lawyer. Space lawyer. Well, there's a dude who's Maritime making lawyer. millions and millions of dollars because of that kind of thing. The UN made a resolution that no, uh, just remember here, that no sovereign nation can claim uh, any celestial body. And a dude said, okay, I'm not a sovereign nation. I own the moon. And he's been selling real estate on the moon for about three decades now. And he's made millions of dollars. But he's not actually giving away any of the moon. He's, he owns the moon, Gavin. He's mapped the moon, and he'll give you like he's a little quadrant. He's giving you like a bit of paper, but you can't go and live on that bit of the moon for free, can you? He owns the moon. That's, he's, he has a claim that he owns the moon because he's the first person to claim sovereignty over it. So who did he leave the moon to in his will? I don't know. I don't think he's dead yet. He's yeah, I think normally people mortality. make wills when they're alive. What's that? I think people normally make wills when they're alive. Can you imagine the estate tax on the moon? <laughs> 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 what would that cost? Some, yeah. some lawyer's got to value, some yeah. actuary has to value the moon. I feel like that should screw him. By him saying he owns the moon, he should have to pay some sort of tax on the moon. That's true. Moon tax. What are you paying? What are you paying? 
Well, it orbits the Earth. You pay whoever it orbits. He pays income tax whenever he sells moon plots. I'll look it Why up. Why doesn't he register so, his moon company on Matt, the moon and then he wouldn't have to pay tax? I'm gonna look up guy who owns the moon. <laughs> Matt Kiltz on Twitter <laughs> brings up an interesting point. Okay. You can sleep in a Lamborghini, but you can't race a house. Okay. You, you would not want to sleep in a Lamborghini. You wouldn't want to. And you definitely wouldn't do want to race seats, the house, though. Do the seats even recline flat in a Lamborghini? Probably not. That reminds I don't think I've me. I've ever though. been in one. I, I've been recently informed of a whole subculture of people who camp in their Teslas. Are you familiar oh, with yeah, this? Oh yeah, camper mode. Yeah. What? What? They camp in their Teslas? Yeah, yeah, because basically they're so efficient that you could run the battery all night and have heat and air and et cetera. All the amenities and you That's actually a good point because a lot of people have the like the free supercharging as well. Can you just park it in one of those superchargers and live in it? I guess you could, but the cost of entry to do that is just it it's would, cheaper than a house. It is cheaper than a Not house. Much, Not much though. It's cheaper than a house, and you have no bills apart from food. Yeah, look at and, that. But people are just That's doing this. Positively, yeah, you never heard of this? This is like a northern <clears throat> California. There's a whole thing. subreddit for it. Yeah, that is wicked. Well, it's just a mattress in a fucking trunk. But That's all it is. It. You have power. You're not using gas. What power do you have? Your battery. You're not plugging in anywhere. Yeah, but exactly. This- what? You're running off your native battery. Running wait, what? Wait, what? You're not running like blenders and, and uh, toasters. No, but like, you know, you, you're, you're living in you're your car. You just need to power your phone and a laptop. So you're running yeah. AC in a LED light in the corner. By yeah. the way, the lights in that car are awful. They're like these little, like, tiny little LEDs. Everything's like super efficient in the car. <laughs> I get it, but it's just like there's way better stuff than that. Like the people who have actual, what's the, oh, damn it. I just saw it the other day. It's like a little mini camper that you tow. But it's so cool. It's just like oh, the little bitty like a, one. Yeah, the little yeah, bitty bitty one. So and it has everything you need. And then, like on the outside, it's got like a full kitchen and everything. Man, that's really cool. And I just feel like that culture is gone in the U.S. Like they have it in Australia and New Zealand still. That uh, caravan culture. Mm-hmm. We just kind of don't have that anymore in the U.S. Like the road trip is not something. Don't people have those big Winnebagos? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're not. I don't think they're nearly as popular. And they don't really no, live in them. Out. It's yeah. like for. Jerks who like to drive across the country for vacation. Well, okay, let's not go calling people jerks. Who <laughs> okay, like, allegedly yeah, yeah. that jerks. <laughs> Let me read this other thing. I don't want park like twenty <laughs> feet away. Want to remind everyone: this episode of Receipt Podcast is also brought to you by Audible. Audiobooks are great for helping you to be a better you. We've teamed up with Audible, and they're offering a free audiobook with a thirty-day free trial. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Just go to audible.com/rt or text RT to five zero zero dash five zero zero. Download a free title and start listening. Audible selection of audiobooks, original shows, news, comedy, and more is unmatched anywhere. You will find what you're looking for. Uh, I've actually been listening to Fire and Fury by Michael Wolf, narrated by Michael Wolf and Holter Graham. It's a really interesting book. Um, it's not only from the political aspect, but just like thinking about organizational structures. I'll talk maybe more about that in a little bit. Uh, Audible members get a credit every month, good for any audiobook, regardless of price, and unused credits roll over to the next month. Don't like your audiobook? You can exchange it, no questions asked. Get a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash RT or text RT to 500-500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash RT or text RT to 500-500. I never understood the point of organizational charts until I started listening to Fire and Fury by Michael Wolf. And organizational just, charts. Right, like org charts. Like who reports to who and oh. why. You never understood that? I, I just like, I, you work, right? It's like, you know who your boss is. And right. You know, you know what your you job is. Though. Right. I never realized that you could have a workplace that's dysfunctional enough that you don't know who reports to who or or what the chain of command is. Mm-hmm. It's like after listening to that book, like, oh, right. Every organization needs an org chart. Like, it's just, it's a no brainer. It, it didn't make any sense to me before. I wonder who at a company has the most people reporting to them. Who's over you at in the org chart? Or any company. Yvonne, I think. Is that you? Yvonne or Matt? I don't know. I mean, technically everyone reports up to Matt, right? So Yeah, but that's through other... I so wonder you mean, at which like, company... First, first degree connections. Has, yeah, has the most people under them. I'm and marketing... It, it, what's the biggest department? Uh, probably animation. You know, but for Rishi, they're in, in the world. We're still about... Any company. Yeah, it's oh, gotta be yo, yo. thousands, right? Yeah, like is there someone who has a hundred thousand people beneath them? I'm yeah. sure. Oh, you mean 100, 000, directly? Wait, a hundred thousand? No. Those are what they call direct reports. There's no way somebody has a hundred thousand direct reports. I mean, Why? Because they that, that's doesn't impossible. seem manageable. Like, to, to be an efficient manager is like five and ten people max. Five to ten. And then you start fucking I think at, it's at, at the call center we had like 20 to 30. That directly reported to us, but they weren't all full time. 
So they're what they call FTEs, full-time equivalents, but that's such a garbage thing because management goes with people. It doesn't go with hours. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's, I mean you get some efficiencies, but still most of your management issues are you're fucking late. And, you know, that, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you have two part-time employees, you got double the chance for that in one day. There are some people who are never late. And wouldn't it be awesome if everyone at one company? Who are like, they? I don't know. Are you looking at me when you say that? Because I'm late now. No, no, I just no. I've learned to be late. Matt has taught me to be late. Matt's late all the time. I I had to do a thing with him last week, and I was convinced he was going to be late. I was like, I showed up to it on time, and I was like, don't worry, everyone. I know Matt's probably be late. He was only like two minutes late. I was like, oh, holy shit! I was like, I, I felt like an asshole for calling him out for it. He was very yeah. He's still late though. Yeah, two minutes. That's not bad. Everyone, not bad. I, I feel like I build up mental buffers with people, and if we agree to meet at a certain place, I know how late to be with different people. My brother, always 30 minutes late. Yeah. Always it, get the text five minutes before time of meeting saying, running late. Like, I hung up with Ashley the other day, gave it about 15 minutes, because I just had a feeling. <laughs> oh, did you? It's a yeah. good call with Ashley. Uh, I looked around to make sure she wasn't here, but yeah. I would say... Put on makeup, I gotta tell her half an hour early for everywhere we're going. So I would like, say Ezra, yeah. maybe 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's an LA thing. LA teaches you that it's okay to be late because everyone's late because of traffic. Mm. So anybody who's spent any amount of time in Los Angeles, punctuality just doesn't matter. I just, I don't think you should ever be late enough where someone could have completed an entire task from beginning to end in the late period. Like, I could have done a load of laundry. Yeah, not but that I'm could, doing what's the a laundry. task though? I don't know, like, I, like if I'm not doing something because I don't have enough time to do it, and then the person's 45 that's, minutes but it's late. But so open-ended. Yeah, it's just like, that's so arbitrary. What if my task was to make this noise? <laughs> <laughs> then it's done. <laughs> I could get that All done. Right, what's the shortest task other than, uh, in your life? <laughs> like, it's like a productive task? Answer an email. Loading the dishwasher. Like, if you're going to meet someone, like, to eat, and someone could have eaten in that amount of time, then that makes sense. But I very rarely meet people to do my laundry. How about, how about the, if they're later than the amount of time the thing you're meeting for would take. Like, if yeah. they're more than 30 minutes late to a 30 minute meeting. I mean, at some point, you're not late, you just never went. Yeah, you missed it. You just didn't, you Like, came. if someone were an hour late for dinner, fuck that! Yeah, they're not an hour, they're not an hour late, they just didn't show up. Yeah. Even if they show up. <laughs> but it's like, you just, you just learn too, it's like, you learn that you can be late with certain people, and they, in certain scenarios. Like, you're late to certain productions, and you're always right. Yeah. You haven't figured out, like, I know for this production, if I show up 30 minutes late, I'm on time. You know, and, it, and you're, you're right. As you do that more, they try and make it so that you're wrong and late, bringing them up, yeah. and eventually the situation improves. It does. Yeah. <laughs> or they schedule you earlier, yeah, thinking that you or won't catch learn, on to yeah. that. But it, it is it is really true that like it's weird the way things teach you how to work with them. Like there's this thing in Austin that they have, and it happened this last weekend, and they they promote the shit out of them on local news. It's usually around holidays and stuff like that. And they say, this is a no refusal weekend. Mm -hmm. And if you get pulled over and you're suspect suspected of drunk driving, you won't be able to refuse a breathalyzer and a blood test. Uh, you'll have to do it. They'll have a, you'll get a court order and you can, like, they do it there on site or whatever. All that has taught me is that I can apparently refuse to take a breathalyzer and a blood test every other day of the year. And that's, I've, I've learned, I learned that because of the no refusal weekend. Mm. Was the, was the refusing yeah, a big enough I, problem to where I, I knew people in the past who would refuse those tests. You should refuse them. And yeah, the Why? They, they would take the punishment. It is legally more beneficial to refuse them. If there's you're no drunk? there's no upside yes. for if you're you drunk, to take that's the test. Big, there's yes. no upside. It's By the only time downside. they give you the test, basically you're already under arrest. There are a lot of blogs about it. I could send you if you're interested. The yeah, uh, the legal limit in the UK is zero, right? Like zero tolerance. <laughs> Is no, it? there's a limit. Is there? Yeah. They're way drunker than we Australia are. Australia is half of what the U.S. is. But the, the whole messaging is different. I've talked about this before and how I think it's backwards here that the messaging they put up, that there's big signs on buildings is like, don't drink and drive, you'll get a ticket, you'll go to jail. Whereas all of the messaging in the U.K. is like, don't drink and drive, you're going to kill someone, you're going to kill yourself, you're going to kill this person. I was waiting for it this whole time. Empty. It it's took empty. a lot longer than I thought. But it's, but then they'll show videos of people getting splattered all over the place. It's like, Which I think is way drive. more effective. Well, I'm, not, I'm afraid to drive for a different reason, in that so. I don't want to, like, get arrested. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What? Oh, for your visa. Yeah, because I don't uh, want to get deported. I don't it, wanna, like... it, is, it, is, it is one of those things, like, what's the upside? I guess there is some upside to driving, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, but if, if, what if I just, like, lost, I stopped paying attention for two seconds, then I have to leave the country. I know people that, uh, I know one person in particular 
that he will not speak to a law enforcement officer. He simply just will not speak. Is he a sovereign citizen? No, he just doesn't speak because he has no obligation to speak. I feel like that's going to make him so suspicious. Right, exactly. Like but he just do place. doesn't, if cops acknowledge him or just say hello or whatever or ask him any questions, he just sit there and won't say anything. It's your right to remain silent. You don't have mm -hmm. to say anything. You don't have to answer any questions or anything like that. All right. But what if it's just someone checking in on something? What do you mean checking in on someone? Knock on your door and go, hey, how's up, everything going in here? Like a cop came up to him and was like, hey, did you see anyone come this way? He would, just be, he would just be like, How's it going today, sir? Yeah. That's just, really like your suspicious. Shirt. You surely walk, be taken in. Just walk away. And be way more inconvenienced by an investigation. He's never been taken in. All right. You know, <laughs> I think a lot of police officers know procedure, and if like there's no reason to, no probable cause, they they know they There's can't no do point. anything. Most yeah. times. God, Speaking of not talking, have y'all seen Mute? Have y'all watched that? I have not on watched it. No, but I'm looking not, forward to The Quiet Place. The Emily Blunt movie that's coming out? I don't know anything about that. Oh, you should watch the trailer. It's cool. Don't, what is Mute like? Don't watch mute. hearing about it. So bad. Bad? It so bad. It was touted as being the spiritual successor to Moon. Had high hopes. That oh. equates to a shitty cameo callback that's like on a TV in a bar. Is it made by the same people? Yeah. Duncan Jones? Yes. David Bowie Jr. Zoe Bowie? <clears throat> Zoe Bowie, right. <laughs> Didn't he make Warcraft too? He did. Yes. That was like the beginning of his descent. Big, big in China. Did he, great. He opened up, he talked about that recently a couple of weeks ago about the conflict involved between the studio, the game company, and himself. Look, dude, you can't hold a bad video game movie against anybody. There's never been a good one. So at this never? point. What's a good video game? Super movie? Mario Brothers. Just Get kidding. The fuck <laughs> I made that exact same joke like two podcasts ago. Oh. We had the same Thanks. discussion. Obviously, I haven't been. No, that's a high five. That's fine. You only watch it when you're on. We get it. We know how that is. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 yeah, good. It's you gotta watch Cloverfield Paradox. Can you imagine really? getting you're the cast? only person I know that said that? You gotta watch it. Look, right, I watched tonight. Can you imagine getting cast in that Quiet Place movie and seeing the script and being like, <laughs> how many how many lines? And then you actually get on set, and there's like a ton of intense acting to do. Uh, you know, my, here's my experience. I would look at my lines, and I'd go, eh, "Gavin's late." <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how that would work. I for remember me. Uh, we watched. I showed you Drive when it oh, first yeah. came out on Blu-ray over at uh, at my old. That house. was my first comment. I was like, "You came over." Dream of a movie. Yeah, you said that's the actor's ultimate movie. Yeah, the mo whole movie. The camera's on him, and he doesn't have to say anything. It's like close-up beauty shots, no lines to remember. Mm -hmm. Just walk around. Like well, a it, what, I don't know, what, dude. That go two different ways. Like Will Smith at the beginning of uh, I Am Legend, that has to be, and uh, like Tom uh, Tom Hanks in Castaway, it's gonna be so fucking hard to be in a movie all by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you hear about the I, uh, breakdown that Ian McKellen had? Oh, in yeah. The Hobbit, because yeah. there was no other actors around, and he was acting with green screens and like people with ping pong balls on the head, <laughs> and he like freaked out about it. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. just like, this is not why I became an actor. Oh. But now, but then he volunteered to be in the fucking Amazon Lord of the Rings thing, as Gandalf. Mm. I, I'm, I, I'm a little excited about that, I have to admit. He just must really like that character. Yeah, or it's like, maybe he's like, feels like... Or he likes the paycheck. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> so Dude, good I gotta say, <laughs> whoever fucking writes, the Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor stories for having to wedge an extra story into the Lord of the Rings mythos. They do a fucking tremendous job. Yeah, really? They really do. I've never seen like supplemental material made by another company that, that does so well. Like maybe um, what's the what's the Kotor, the, the uh, Star Wars yeah. game that everybody fucking goes apeshit for? That was really good. Yeah, I will say I, I felt like Shadow of War did it really well. Once you're done with the game, there's a cutscene that kind of tries to place it, place the timeline within the movie franchise as well, and that was garbage. Yeah, that didn't try. work. Just didn't fit. Right. No. Mm. But all, all the other stuff I thought went really well. But then when, when they tried to tie it to the movie, I was like, <clears> no, <throat> no. We had a very movie-heavy podcast without Jack Patilla. <laughs> oh, we saw Annihilation. That yeah, we weird. saw the the other movie that people are talking about besides Mute, which is Annihilation. Black Panther. Black Panther's good. So good. I should say it the way my mom says would say it. Uh, we went and saw the Black Panther. <laughs> she, she, she would always whisper anytime she said any race whatsoever. Oh, yes. Every single time. You want to get some Chinese food? <laughs> <laughs> no, Black Panther was really good. I went in with high expectations and it still uh, satisfied them. Such a good movie. I thought really, some really of the effects were a bit crap though. What? Yeah. Where? Like when they're all uh, there's, there's the pond of fighting. 
I don't know the name of it. <laughs> and then all the people are like stood up on the cliff. Okay. Very colorful. Yeah. It just it looked a little bit sort of Game of Thrones budget. It looked it looked a little uh a little bit, little, the lighting there was so much bright. I'll, I'll give the, you that. A little CD Ramish. That's what I was saying. For about some that. reason, I I can't place what's weird about it. When it's not really a spoiler, they're covering his face with snow. Right? Yeah. E. It looked like it was CG. I think it was. But uh, then I was like, why didn't they just use eye shavings and do that? Or like something that looked like that. <laughs> Ain't easy. It's it's such a weird snow. take eight. It's just such a weird thing to do a visual effect. Yeah, the on. snow did not look right. It didn't I'll look give right, and I assume it was way more expensive than just. I, see, I, new I assumed ice. it was like styrofoam or like something else, like just, oh, it just like it so didn't strange. have the right texture. I thought yeah. it was like fake snow too. Yeah, yeah, like fake, not necessarily digital, but fake. Yeah, and I can't let that stuff not take me out of the moment. I hate it. I hate watching movies where I'm just like I'm. It's like a technical marvel. See, and I'm I just like, get oh. sucked in completely. I, like, I get sucked out. I get sucked in, and I'm sucked out. I know Did the I beginning of Atomic it? Blonde when she's in that bathtub with all the ice. Yeah. I know that's just lukewarm water and <laughs> plastic cubes, but I'm still like, ooh, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be some actors who would probably request real life. Are you Christian Bale? Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, Daniel Day Lewis. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought uh, Michael B. Jordan w was really good as Killmonger. I think Killmonger was Hate the name. probably the best villain. Do you like Risemonger? <laughs> yeah, I do. But probably. And I don't even know if the villain's the right word. We were talking about this earlier. Right. Probably the best antagonist in the entire Marvel universe. Although, and that says a lot to me because I have a huge problem with villains in the Marvel universe. Every fucking first movie in every franchise is basically, here's the good guy, and here's the bad guy who's exactly like him. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like you have... Like Iron Monger. Winter Soldier and Captain America. Yeah, you've got Iron Monger and Iron Man. Yeah. Spider Man and Spider Man and Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. The uh, but it's like I just it's one of the things I think Marvel has always kind of suffered from is that the villains are like Joker and Batman. They're like flip sides of the same coin, sure, but they're not the same. It's like Joker's not wearing a white bat suit. You know, Two Face is the flip side of his own coin. He is. Yeah. That's make an excellent point there. <laughs> you know, I mean, you do have stuff like Bizarro Superman, but he's not like the main nemesis of Superman. That's yeah. that's uh, what's his name? Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor. No, yeah. it's a big green rock. Yeah, even the Fantastic Four is Doctor Doom. You know, it's like it's we don't need to have the exact same like evil version of the good guy for every single movie. We don't have to have that. So Fantastic Four at this point is just an audition movie for being in the Marvel <laughs> universe. Way better. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's so fucking good. He's so fucking good in this. Who's ripped? I love that character, dude. He's like the perfect physical specimen. In yeah, this. aside from all the lumps. Ah, it's just decoration at that point. That's cosmetics. Yeah. Yeah, it those, was, uh, were those kills? Was that what that was? Right. Yeah. yeah. But he still, uh, I think it was Jessica Negri tweeted about it. Like he's got the long the ones across yeah. his chest. It's like, what is the difference with those versus the bumps? He's torture. These are tortures. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it made it last. Yeah. I don't but know, I really, I, I love good. that character. Yeah. And it's a great movie. It made me. I was telling you, it made me think of uh, Charles Xavier and Magneto. It's like, obviously, they set up in the X Men universe that Magneto's a villain, but it's just two different perspectives on the world and two different approaches to. Uh, to an end. The I'm Holocaust so glad they will do that to someone. What's that? The Holocaust will do that to someone. Yeah, being wronged in general. Which I think is a good origin for any villain. If you want them to be sympathetic. You know, they got wronged in some way. This Venom movie looks weird. Tom Hardy? Yeah. Looks like it's going the opposite way of most of these superhero movies where they start with a departure. Like Deadpool. The first Deadpool appearance was so weird. Where he has no mouth and the blade hands. Yeah. And then they they finally figure out, oh, we can do more with this character, and we'll do their true story from the comics. Venom, it seems like they're going the other way. Hmm. Like even though they they used uh, Topher Grace for Venom <laughs> in Spider Man Three, man, that is a, a dated casting call right there. Yeah, that's that one. <laughs> and it's, what's the name of the character? Becomes Venom Eddie Brock. Any comic people here? Yeah. I think Isn't it's that's why he left. Tom Hardy's a way better show? fit for that. Yeah, but the the the, the stuff they're showing in the trailer does not look anything like the origin story for Venom. When does that come out? I don't know, I think pretty soon. Movie. Um, October 5th. What do you, oh, that's far away. What are you most looking forward to that's coming out? There's something like coming out in the next month that I'm so excited about. I want to see Infinity War. Really? Yeah, I do, yeah. I, re I do really want to see Infinity War. I mean, video games or anything. Like, are you more excited for Infinity War or Red Dead 2? Infinity War. Infinity War. I give a shit about Red Dead. Becca, what about you? What are you looking forward to? Uh, death? No, uh. <laughs> You're having a I, baby. Okay, you I might have, focused on that. I have, like, TV shows. So that's really all I've got. Because I can't really go to the movies that much. So. Did you read the hubbub between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall? 
No, I saw someone tweet about that. I don't, I don't care about that shit. That was, that was, a, that uh, was, that was a dish. Westworld April, right? That's oh, is technically it? What's what? up with April? Westworld? No. Oh, is it really? Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> I mean, that's what yeah, I'm looking April for. April 22nd. I bought that on Blu-ray. What, Westworld? Yeah, it never showed up. Mother uh, is it out already? I hate that, huh? Yeah, so I bought it on 4K and it didn't- I just realized I didn't- I never got it. <laughs> bought it like a month ago. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Sea of Thieves. We had- it's- it is- Gavin has solved such a huge problem in our house. It's the one game that everyone in our house will play, which is that's all I care about. Interesting. I can always I always lose one person from every game. Who'd you lose from PUBG? Ashley. She won't play. I PUBG. heard you I heard you're off PUBG. Who said that? Ooh. I got some inside info. Who did JD tell you that? I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I don't want to name my. They're mad at me about the microtransactions. But I hear I hear you're on another game. <laughs> I've been playing Fortnite. That's what I hear. But I've, <laughs> I, I I'm done. I think it was. Oh really? That's not what I heard. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. They have they have they have stuff that's pretty smart, like they do daily rewards and daily challenges. They probably could use some of that in PUBG, mm. you know. Also, it's a lot easier to play a match of Fortnite than Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds, you're, you're committing half an hour. Fortnite, dude, seriously, three minutes, three or three four minutes. minutes. What? The map, you can literally. Are you that bad? You what? Well, if you go hard, yeah. If you just go running in, but even if you play like a full one, it's maybe like fifteen minutes. I like the creep. I like I do the too, slow burn. I like sometimes the I don't have time for that. And I, I like I like dedicating my time. I like I'm gonna have this block of time and I'm gonna dedicate it to PUBG and I'm gonna slow burn my way through it. And at the end, if I win, it's a huge accomplishment. And if I don't, it's fucking anger to fuel the next round. But the problem with my anger in PUBG that, that sustained me for a while when I wasn't doing well, then that turned into a feudal anger because I was getting killed by hackers constantly. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. And that seems like it's died off a little I bit. Think there was like a two week period there. Where I was like, why am I even playing this game? I think that has really derailed their development roadmap. Yeah, I, I bet it has. Yeah. So, would you say that if you didn't play a game of PUBG and then someone was half an hour late, you'd be annoyed? Yes, that would, I would be annoyed by that. I'm, I want to be perfectly clear Battlegrounds is a far superior game to Fortnite. You know, Fortnite, they did kind of tag this Battle Royale thing on the end. I don't care what anybody says. I was at their E3 presentation. Like a month before they came out. And I mean, the fact that they had the model set up where it's going to be retail for a certain amount of time and then we're moving it to free to play, that is like, we have no faith in this game, basically. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if something has that on the horizon or they have that in the roadmap, they're all, they're almost saying, like, we don't expect this thing to last very long. Then the Battle Royale thing came, it's completely saved that game. It's now even more popular than Battlegrounds is on Twitch. Yep. I just, it's, I, if I could play Fortnite where you can't build stuff, I'd like that better. And I know it's very core to the game. But it's really just, it kind of blows the whole shooter thing out of the water. You just got to be really good at building ramps and these little columns as fast as you fucking can. And I just like, I don't have any interest in getting good at that. Can you that macro in that game? I don't know if you can or not. I don't know if you can or not. I would like to see if it's maybe different on console. But man, in PC, it's like, literally, you know, if somebody gets out in the open in Battlegrounds and you kind of like wait for them to clear to where they've got nothing they can hide behind. Mm -hmm. And then you start to open fire on them. It's like, in in... Battlegrounds like bang, and of course I'm shitty at aiming, so it's like bang, 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 try to hit this fucking person. In Fortnite, it's bang, wall, 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 and you're like, oh god. And then you, they, they, you have cover everywhere you go. Imagine that in Battlegrounds, you can yeah. literally just like make cover, and it's can just, you just like crawl and make cover the whole way, like in front of you, that way you're constantly. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can like you can put like uh, F1, which is a, a vertical wall, and then you can just if you have enough wood. Which you usually do by the middle of the game, you just like run and just build yourself a path to go, hmm. and you have to like time it a little bit because the early stages they can blow up the wall if they know you're going that way, but not really. I mean, it's just like the cover thing just drives me nuts. And you run into those players who they spend a lot of time in Fortnite; they're very good at it. And then the moment that you shoot at them, you get the drop on them or whatever, it doesn't matter because they just all of a sudden they just build a fortress in like two seconds. So would that game not work without the building? I would like to try it without the building. I'm just saying it'd be great if there was a mode that I could play where there's no building. I'd just like to see that. Bad bones. Yeah. It might be garbage. It might be not be any fun whatsoever. You know? Also, there's definitely parts of the game that you couldn't do without building. Like, they'll hide chests in house. That's a cool mechanic in that game. Where you can hear chests. They mm -hmm. hum. But, like, they'll be in the ceiling sometimes. So you have to, like, break it and build a ramp and get up there. And you wouldn't be able to get to those things. So maybe only build inside. Maybe. 
I don't know. <laughs> so it's a problem for some other developer to fix. People love the game, so. Do you find that stuff that was fixed in history when you were a child, it's very, it's very hard to, when something changes, it's very hard to remember when that thing was. <laughs> Go ahead. Let, let me, uh, yeah, <laughs> what the hell did you just ask? So my example for this, that I, I was trying to figure out what it is that always confused me about it. When was Pluto declassified? Not that long ago, within the last 10 years. I want to say like 05 or 06. Yeah, you're exactly right. Okay. Yeah. I just always think it's much it's a much more recent thing and I'm like, oh no, it was over a decade ago. Yeah. But because it was it was like a planet and then it was removed, I always think of it as like that's a new thing that's happened, but yeah. I'm just older. I want to know what the new like, mnemonic device yeah. is for rem remember ugh, remembering the, the planets. What was it before? It, there was some variation, but I was taught my very educated mother just served us nine pies, not cooked. Served us nine pies. Yeah. Sometimes they say pizzas. They served us noodles. Yeah. So I, I want to know what what is it? I just, also, it's it. only eight. I'm an astronomer. But what's the official one? Yeah, it's like just nudes. <laughs> but surely it's just like remembering a phone number. There's only eight things. Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's harder yeah. to remember than to remember the, the fucking planets. Yeah, well, yeah right, but I, I don't have any special way of remembering the planet order. I just know them because there's only so many. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I don't think there's an official one. I don't think Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to be like, so we visited <laughs> Mars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd be like, what, what is he doing? Did you see, I, uh, I saw this thing earlier today that, what was this? A company made a vibrator that I saw it. orders pizza for you automatically. <laughs> what? What, when you're done? Right. That way when you're you're done using it, a uh, delivery pizza shows up. No, it should start the order I think at the I think beginning. it starts okay. the order at the moment <laughs> you start using it. And that way when you're done. What if you're doing it's some tantric shit and it Domino's interrupts Domino's pizza you? tracker. It, it, it connects to Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> is what it says. Um, Do Domino's know that it's like a... A jerk off pizza? No, I think it just goes through like their their web ordering system. I guess like what I'm reading here is that awkward delivery. It's got a separate pizza order button on it as well, so you could probably start and hit that button when you start, and it connects via Bluetooth to your phone. I would just order that thing as a pizza button. It's like have a magnet on it on your fridge. Like I feel like pizza. Boom! Oh, wrong button. I love. It. I feel like that's the kind of thing that makes me feel like we live in the future. It's like that's it. Rub rub rub. rub. That's oh, not real. Like, rub grub. God. <laughs> I really wish Barbara were here to comment on this. Sure, it should be me. grub rub <laughs> because then there'd be like grub hub. That woman went but home from work that day. That orders. And someone said, "What'd you do at work today?" She said, to "Nothing at all. Never asked me about it again." <laughs> She's holding a vibrator and a piece of pizza. <laughs> or that's the, that's the greatest day of work ever. I don't know. About I got that. paid to sit around holding a vibrator and pretending like I was eating pizza. <laughs> that's not the greatest day by a long stretch. It's pretty. It's, it's a there. day pretending to eat pizza. Oh, you're right. They, they only be better if she ate pizza. Hey, do you think a gold medal is the most useless of the great human achievements? Like you spend your whole life and then you get this gold medal and then we well, also get a lot of money. <laughs> do you? But, yeah. It's a cash prize with gold medal, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. You could sell your I mean, gold it's medal. Gold, it's gold medal, right? I'm pretty sure it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars to win a gold medal. I don't think it, that's true. Gold medal, cash. That prize. seems like can't like, they not accept money? Like if somebody said three Winter Olympics oh, no, ago no. they got a gold medal in cross country skiing, your reaction to that would be, ah, hey, cool, right? I mean, no, it's gold medal. It's like really, I really mean, hard really to cool. achieve. It is really cool, but it's like it's a. <laughs> What what got me thinking about this was did you see where the curling team wrote to Delta and they said, Hey, we just won a gold medal. How about some upgrades? And Delta went, nah. But we'll see you on the flight. Congrats <laughs> on the gold medal. It was like Neh. So there is a cash prize associated with it. How much? How much? The US Olympic Committee. So this isn't the US, we pay oh, our people. We pay so our that own people. Makes sense. The US Olympic Committee awards twenty five thousand dollars for gold medals. Should That's be way more. Much. Fifteen thousand dollars for silver and ten thousand dollars for bronze. It doesn't cover your fucking but trip. That also you must pay state and federal taxes oh on that as well. God. Dude, if the government huh. gives you money, there's no way you should be have to pay taxes on money you get from That's the not government. the government. It's the US Olympic Committee. That's the government. That's the government. got US in it. That's a private company? The US bank has US in it. What what U what U.S. bank is that a bank? That's U.S. A bank, bank, the name of a bank. If they give me money, I'm not paying taxes on it. American no. Airlines has. I'm just American kidding. I will pay all my taxes all the time. I pay more. Than oh, and year. and taxes. Olympians have to pay tax on the value of the medals themselves. <gasps> they do not. Yes, that's horrible. And the 
gold medal. Do you get like a W nine for the gold? About five hundred and seventy dollars. That's it. Yeah, not real gold. So it's, not, it's not real gold. So it's just gold plated. Wow. I did do that. Pyrite. I used to Bronze work with a guy worth who a negligible had a amount, metal. so it's not taxed. Negligible. Can you imagine oh finding God. that out? <laughs> That you don't need, like this is we're not even gonna tax on this thing, this bronze metal. <laughs> it's just a big penny. <laughs> Did you hear, like uh I think Japan when their citizens would turn a hundred, they would give them a silver plate at the government. Okay. And now Japan has so many old people over a hundred that they had to scale back the quality. It's now a silver plated plate because it was basically costing their government like ten million dollars a year or something to, to support this program. What's the US equivalent of that. Like anything like that. Shout out on Good your Morning Medicaid America. expires. What's that? Your Medicare expires. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, don't get any, you don't get any healthcare. That's that's the American way. So I had a thing where uh, first of all, there's a game I want to tell you about. You should play. Tell me. It's a deck building game. You like deck games, right? It combines yeah, absolutely deck guild deck building, deck building, and roguelike games. So it's like you just do a run through the game. I don't know what that means. What's the you deck? understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's called Slay the Spire. Get, get it and play it. I, you'll like it. I think you'll like it. Like FTL is a roguelike game. You just boot up FTL. You play FTL? Nope. Ooh, 10 out of 10 on Steam. Such a good game. That, that's actually, though, that's why I bought it, Gus, because it had such high reviews mm -hmm. in the strategy section. Interesting. And I'm really enjoying it. It's early access, but it's good enough for me. I'm sure, I'm, I don't think I've gotten to the parts of the game where you can unlock stuff yet. I played Papers, Please again the other day. So good. They had that short film came out. People have been tweeting at me. People yeah. have been tweeting at me nonstop about that fucking short film. I haven't seen it. Have seen, I haven't seen it yet either. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. Stop tweeting it to me. Um, I, I gotta so look up the name of somebody here. Only the UK, Sweden, and Norway do not give success payouts for Olympic medals, according to Peter Hayes. And Norway dominates at the Winter Olympics. Like Den Denmark has like three Winter Olympics medals total ever. Wow. Something but like their, ne their neighbor has something like 380. Yeah, but they're further away. So I guess like the they're, they're their neighbor, but they're it rarely snows in Denmark. Like it snows, it rarely snows enough for like winter sports. Is that true? Yes. Oh, well, that explains it then. Right. I guess that it's but Jamaica doesn't financially have a ton either. financially worth winning gold medals just for the like insane sponsor deals you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the personal pride, sense of accomplishment, we're really discounting. Yeah, that you here. did like one of the best things a human yeah. can do, and like the field. best in your competition. My, I used to when I lived used to live in an apartment. Over ten years ago, and my downstairs neighbors were silver medalists for swimming. I forget what they did. I forget like which swimming competition, but oh. I've, I've seen like an Olympic medal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to work with a guy who was on the U.S. sailing team in Barcelona, and he had a silver medal. And I lived across the street from a guy who like dominated at the last Summer Olympics. You just attract Olympians. I know it's so weird. Has Michael won a medal in the Olympics? No, I wish. Mm. That make it what, a lot what could he win a medal in? Swimming. Math. Is he really good? He's a really good swimmer. He can hold what his kind? breath. Underwater swimming? There's no such thing. <laughs> I don't he know. doesn't look like a swimmer. I would totally enter underwater swimming. Yeah. Can you put your feet on the bottom and push? Because I would do that. Feet on the bottom? Hmm? You just go up. Nah, you can run along the bottom of a pool. I'm not faster than swimming against the water. Yeah, I bet you I could, I could run you along could, the bottom of a pool. So you'll say you could sprint along the bottom I'm of a pool. I'm not running sitting upright. I'm swimming and using the bottom to push. Yeah, I can beat you in an underwater race. Absolutely. I think he's full of shit. Challenge. I'm not full of shit. Like I think he's full happen. of shit. So I'm just gonna be swimming. Yes. He underwater. Can't, he can't hold his breath long enough for this. I fucking give hold my breath as much longer than you think. <laughs> no, no, I no. I, I call I, bullshit. I also, holding your breath is one of the things that's like cardio, where if you practice it, you can build it up really, really quickly. But pushing, you're pushing off. You're just gonna be slipping like this. Oh, you're, you're totally right, Kevin. He's full of shit. You'll be wasting not so much shit. energy touching the bottom when you could just be kicking against the water. I'm, oh, dude, you know, I'm gonna we gotta film this. We gotta film yeah. this. Do you have like you grip stumps instead of no! feet? No, I just have feet, <laughs> regular feet. All right, we gotta wrap this up. I want to tell my story real quick. All right, I get to two stories. I want to thank somebody uh, like on the podcast. What I want to thank me undies and audible free free stuff. Here's thank you. So it's for your birthday. A gentleman on Steam, I assume a gentleman. That was assumptive. Named McYeoman. That's probably not how you pronounce that. How would you pronounce that? Oh, I know that guy, Mac. I know him. Yeah. Mac Yeoman. Yeah. How well, do you say no, it? No, no, I mean his name's like. Mac. It's M C Y O M A N. <clears throat> I'm gonna like say McYeoman. McYeoman. He tried to reach out to you for your birthday. He got for you. Uh, I guess he opened it. I'm gonna assume he opened it and didn't pay for it. He got one of the rarest items in Battlegrounds. 
but you wouldn't return any of his messages on Steam. I did, so he sent it to me instead. On Steam? Yeah. I didn't get any messages on Steam. That's he said his, he was trying to get I'm hold of you. Pretty sure that's his username on the RT site, too. Hmm. You probably just don't have public I probably don't have my messages friends open to, yeah. to, to non-friends. So he sent me he sent me uh, the white leather hoodie, Ooh. which is like $140. Damn. To and it. you took it? God. I'm going to assume that he got it through a box and that he didn't pay for it. I would never I would have taken so. it if he paid for it. I'm gonna stick to that. You're if anybody else wants to send me anything else in PUBG, you're not even playing that game anymore. I play the game. I I like the game better than Fortnite. I play some Fortnite. I also play not, Slay the not Spire. Now what I heard. I know. Who told you that, JD? Uh, I'm not gonna say. Fucking. Rat. I'm gonna betray. Oh. I, got, I got moles inside the Burns, the the Burns Palace. He's it's probably gonna be. Ashley. They're very upset with me for playing that amount. <laughs> Ashley. Okay, so let me tell the story about Uber, and then I can tell the story that leads into the story about Ashley. Really quickly, you got time for this? Yeah, we got time. So the other day we had. The million dollars butt season five rap party. It was a very nice party, would you say, Gavin? Oh, you went to that yeah, one, huh? The location but was. I, I feel like I had an obligation to go to that because it's a rap party. No, no, no. I right. wanted to go. There was pizza, but I did not go. Via 313 pizza? Mm -hmm. Excellent. So I, I, so I thought, I was already home. I thought, I want to go out and actually have a couple beers. So I'm going to take an Uber instead of driving myself there. So I went to go take an Uber. Uber or Lyft? Uber. Okay. But I, sh I shouldn't use Uber. We bring it up a lot. I really, I shouldn't use Uber. I was right, Austin. I, I, I'm, I'm Austin. an asshole. I'm an asshole because I'm, it's I convenient. switched to life. I should, I should change. I should right, right, Austin. But uh, I went to go meet the driver of my rideshare service of choice, <laughs> and he texted me and said, "I'm here." And I said, "Okay." And where I live, there's not all, like <laughs> where it's story. getting picked up. There's not a lot of street lights, and so it was dark. And I had my jacket on. I had my baseball cap on. I go and I open the door. And the guy goes, are you Bernie? And I go, yeah, yeah, you looking for Bernie? He goes, yeah, pulls away. While I'm standing there with my hand on an open door, he just like guns it and takes off. To where like, the, I let go of the door, the door shuts on its own, and he just drives away. And I was like, what? And then there was a car kind of coming the other way down the street, and it kind of felt like he was trying to get out of that person's way, so I thought, all right, well, I'll text this guy through the app. I'm like, hey, you, le ha -ha, you left me on the side of the road <laughs> standing here. No, resp no reply at all. Zero reply. And I wait just for the hell of it. I wait five to ten minutes. He start, he's halfway to the destination on the GPS just driving there. The trip started. And I'm like, what in the world? Won't I answer my phone calls or anything? So I finally just go, all right, cancel the trip. And I canceled it. And I'm sure that when I canceled it, he probably went, what? Why did you cancel the ride? And he's like, where the hell? <laughs> he must have wondered what the fuck happened to me. Oh my I was God. really tempted to let him go all the oh way. My God. And you actually <laughs> think that he thought you were in the car when he drove off? Like, there's, a, there's a give. Have. There's a noticeable give when someone sits in your car. Yeah. <laughs> he should well, know that by now. attention? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what if the trip canceled? He looked back and was so amazed and he just swerves <laughs> off the road. Yeah. That was, was crazy. He ghost all along. But I was so like, and then I got another ride to go to this party. And when I got there, I was telling people the story, and uh, Ashley was there, and I met Ashley there. She went out with uh, uh, Gavin for drinks earlier, and I met them at the party. And I remember it was Barbara and Trevor, and I think Miles was there too. And I'm telling this, this story about the Uber, and I'm just like, Ashley's standing next to me, I got my arm around her. And she's like, fidgeting, like this, and I'm just talking and telling this story. And she's like, keeps fidgeting, and eventually she just like, literally takes her hand and pushes me away. And I go, what is the problem? And she says, you're trying to undo my bra. And I didn't realize this while I'm telling the story. I'm just like, out of like, <laughs> some kind of weird muscle memory. I was just trying to unhook her bra with my left hand, like, absentmindedly. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I have no idea. I was so oh, apologetic God. about it. But I was also laughing pretty hard, too. Because I realized, oh, yeah, I've been trying to unhook your bra while I've been telling the story. And I had, well, I mean, you'd been through a traumatic experience. You, like, didn't know whether you were in the car or not. So you're just, your mind was somewhere else. I needed to make sure that I existed. <laughs> <laughs> I need to embrace life. Jesus. I had a similar thing with with Lyft where I didn't actually get to the car. He just went right by where I was and then he just kept driving away. I was like, oh, he's missed the turn. I assume he's gonna... Nope, he's keep... No, oh, oh, he's on the highway. No, he's going to the destination without me. So I texted him. I was like, I never got in the car. You're going to the, where I'm going. You didn't pick me up. He didn't reply. He went all the way to the destination, kept going past that, and then just drove around. And then eventually, like after about forty minutes, because I didn't, I didn't cancel it because I don't think I don't know how to cancel a trip okay. on Lyft while you're on the trip. It just said ride in progress, so I was like, 
I, he thinks I'm in the he, I'm in the car apparently, so I just left it. Um, then switched to Uber, and then actually went where I was going. About an hour later, he ended the trip, and I looked on the map. He went all the way down south by the old office and ended up in Round Rock. So was he just Which racking up charges? North. And then I and then I was like, because he would, he texted me back in that time, and he, and I, he was like, oh sorry, I had another rider. I was like, that's not possible. But the, but no rider would want that path that you took. Because he went to like four different places and ended up like he went do you miles think south errands? and ended up miles north. Do you north. think he started taking rides on another platform? Oh, maybe. Right, and like he didn't, he forgot that one. Like that one wasn't giving him new rides because he was on a ride and he was oh. taking up picking up riders on a different platform. Maybe that's the one thing I could. What think. would have been awesome is if it, if he got me on Uber as well. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other day I had I had a couple of weird ones uh, when we did the podcast on Monday. I took a ride share down to the to venue. I had a, a driver who spoke no English, which was the first time I've ever uh, had that. Uh, and then the other day I had one who I, I put in my address for pickup. They came and they parked like down the street and around the corner like, uh, I'm at your place. I'm like, nope, I'm not there. Like, no, I'm outside. Like, I'm standing on the street. I'm not there. Like, where are you? Like, I'm at one, two, three, you know, my street. I'm on the pin. He's like, oh, where is that? It's at one, two, three, my street. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to turn on the street. Is it right or the left? If you take a right, you get to one, two, three, my street. It's like, it's in your fucking GPS. <laughs> Just look at the fucking app, you fucking idiot. You're texting me on the device that will tell you this. Right. Like, I know it, it you have the information in front of you. I put it in. I dragged the pin to make sure it was in the exact right spot. It's just so frustrating when I, I was just really annoyed at the Lyft app because I was like, I have to download a different app. I can't. I, I like force quit. I, I looked for all these other ways to exit the trip and I just couldn't. It made that app completely useless. So did I assume you had like to sixty bucks? Yeah, I assume you had to then go through an appeals process. I did. I, I went through customer service, and I, I was just like, this guy's a moron. <laughs> this guy's an <laughs> idiot. Thing. I, I had to classify mine as uh, driver was driving dangerously because he drove away <laughs> when I was like standing there. True, true. I ran over my feet or something. But I had to put put something, so I put that. I would love to know what happened with yours. Like, did he think you were in the car? I, me too. I'd or love did to know. he just suddenly realize he had to be somewhere else? I don't know. Maybe I freaked him out because it was dark that night and there was like no moonlight out. It was really How dark. How shifty were you looking? Did you try and undo his I bra? I think I, I didn't try to undo his bra. No. What about his jock strap? Was that I okay? did. No. Okay? None of that was happening. None of that was happening. I didn't have long enough with him for him to tell a story of me to live. like <laughs> snip snip. Maybe right. maybe your dick was out or something. <laughs> you just were fiddling Accidental. with your dick. You just didn't realize. <laughs> this is a, a tweet someone sent. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's fu- it's gonna be like twice as slow. Yeah. You're crazy. It's no, no it's not even. It's I mean, more than least twice as slow. That's aerodynamic so slow. Way to try like and cut through water. There's rubber, no rubber Scooby, sc- Scooby. Scooby. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap this. Rubber up. Scoobies. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.